when on offer at the Kumiala Memorial Sporting hey, Club. Bingo is held Tuesday hey, at 1.30 p.m. Uh, and again on Thursday at 7.30 p.m. Friday night, there's 60 Christmas mad Friday minutes.
the Thanks to Community Bank Wentworth and District, Hot FM is the station you need for all your live and local SFNL broadcasts. Now, here's your number one commentary team, led by Mitch Rod, along with the best in the business, Pat Silcock, Michael DiFabrizio, Ben Ridley, boundary writer John Hollywood, and the man with all the stats, Max the Axe Collingwell. Game on. Oh, what timing it is. Game on here at Sarah Oval for the opening game of the Sun Ranger football and the Netball League season. For those of you just joining us, welcome here to Sarah Oval today. For those of us who might be listening through on Filming Footy as well, g'day to you. Hopefully you enjoy the live stream of today's contest. Of course, it is all about really one man who's coming in and will be donning the number one for Imperial Football Netball Club. My name's Mitch Wright. The pleasure to have your company with us again today. The number one caller in Sun Ranger is next to me, Pat Silcox. Patty. Nice to see you again, mate. We're looking forward to another big season ahead. Yeah, can't wait, Mitch. It's uh, so good to have footy back here in Sun Rosia. Weather gods haven't quite been that kind to us, but uh, we seem to figure that might make this a much more even contest. I was thinking if this is a deadly sandwich, the drizzle that's coming over the top would be perfect, but it's not quite there for us at the moment. It is a little bit wet outside, which certainly could favour potentially the visitors here today, you would think, because the crash and bash style of football they played at times last year, Paddy, was certainly very impressive. And it's going to be probably a slippery day again today. Yeah, just checking uh, the bomber. Only had a mill, according to those guys, but I'm not quite sure that's uh, the correct way. But we're just waiting here at the green machine to make their entry. I wonder if uh, the big superstar recruit's going to lead the boys out onto the ground for the first time. Yeah, the man who does all the analysis for us, Michael DiCabrito, apparently tells us there's 95% humidity going around at the moment. We can feel every one of those percentages in this yeah. box right now. As we might throw over to the man who is the one with all the numbers, and great to see you again this year, Max the Axe Hollywood. Welcome to you, Maxie. Yeah, thanks, Mitch. Now, pleasure to have you again with us this year, mate. You are going to be running the gamut through Four players from either side. Uh, let's take us through who you're looking at for Imperials first off. So for Imperials today, we have Anthony McDonald from Woody. Who apparently is your hero. You decided to get down to the rooms to get as close to the man as you could. Yep. And uh, who else have you got there, mate? We've got Aaron Lasky. So it's one of the Queensland recruits coming down play in the midfield. Fred Hards. Of course, the main man here at in the green and white and who else have you got as well and red balance yeah it'll be interesting to see how the coach goes playing as well oh, oh, yeah. 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 Certainly will be as we flip over to the uh, Eagles for you, Maxi. Here you're looking at in red and white this afternoon. Charlie Forward. And the new recruit coming down from Finley. Isaac Corver. Who was just so good coming off half back in through the midfield last year. Benji New. Of course, the Randy McLeod medal winner. And Isaiah Johnson. Yeah, certainly the man with all the goals up front. Who are you tipping today, Maxi? Imperials by six. Ooh, you get on the green machine. The train. I like yeah. it. He's the number one fan down there at the moment. Thank you very much, Max Hollingworth. We'll come back to you during the quarter time break for all the numbers as Michael Di Fabrizio joins us. And for the first time today, down at ground level, we're going to throw down to our man for Club Aquarius. It is John Hollywood. Johnny, welcome to you, mate. Did you bring the poncho? We've quite got John in harness there at the moment. Have to just uh, pat out for a little bit, Mitch, and maybe uh, switch over at Michael too. But both sides are on to the ground here at Sarah Oval and going through their final pre-game routine. We'll get a toss of the coin shortly. Maybe the Gremlins in the middle. Creep in with the, with the rain up here at the moment. But Michael DeFabrizio has come in and joined us. And as usual, analysis is your game. And you've run the rule over some players that are either new or coming back to the side at the moment. What's, what have you found there in the playing list? Yeah, no, a couple of uh, fresh faces. So uh, in terms of Imperials, we've obviously got the club debut of uh, Brad Bellis, the new coach. So we'll be looking forward to keeping an eye on him. And uh, Harry Knights has crossed over from the jury. He played se three senior games uh, for them last year. So... Um, but mostly he was in the under-18, so hard uh, team to crack that will draw aside last year, so uh, he's obviously got a bit of potential and has earned the Round 1 uh, Imperials debut, so that'll be good. And then obviously uh, their big name recruits, Anthony McDonald, Tip and Woody, uh, with uh, 133 uh, AFL games behind him, uh, if you don't mind. Pretty handy. Yes, and uh, but uh, I'm really interested in their Noosa recruits. Uh, Aaron Lasky uh, comes in. He was uh, he captained uh, Noosa. This is, the, this is a thing of popple, so a, a pretty high standard competition and uh, has big raps on his leadership, 150-plus game player for them. Um, and even got nine votes in the league at Best and Ferris last year in the Quaffle. So uh, that's a pretty high standard of player that they've, they've managed to bring in. And then Riley Buntain, also from Noosa, but more of a key, key defender slash rebounding defender type. So a lot to like about him. Yeah, absolutely. We just saw the coin toss in the middle of the ground there. And it is the home skipper, Brad Hart, who has won it. 
the Imperials will be kicking to the left of your radio dial down towards the San Mateo Avenue and from here. Uh, let's have a look through from the Robin Bell Houston perspective, Deco. Not a huge amount of change from last year's side, but certainly uh, the big recruit from Charlie Ford is the uh, the main man of interest. Absolutely. Uh, took out the, uh, the Finley BNF last year. Uh, midfielder type is uh, going to get plenty of the ball, you would think, and uh, yeah, really, um, yeah, really is uh, someone that comes in with big wraps as, as a as a bit of a ball winner. So uh, really uh, nice to add to that to their midfield depth that we saw last year to add another into that mix is going to be pretty dangerous. And then uh, the other one looks like it's going to be the debut game for Matthew Cameron, not uh, not Dion, but yes. Matthew out there as well. And uh, click, click, click. Absolutely. And, and given the absence of Ricardo Liberata, he's still got three more games to serve from his suspension coming out of the final series last year. So uh, they're going to need some goals. And Matthew Cameron in the under-18s last year, 32 goals in 15 games. So clearly knows how to find the, uh, the big sticks and put it through them and was also named in the best 11 out of those um, 15 games as well. So uh, clearly a lot of uh, talent there from Matthew Cameron and uh, given what we've seen from uh, Dion, uh, I think uh, we've got a lot more a lot more to come, although I was looking at him, he's, he's not uh, the, he doesn't have the biggest presence out there, but uh, as Dion Cameron showed, that doesn't always uh, define uh, how you are as a player. Might have to call them the paparazzi, I reckon, this down in the Ford 50 is now, I think, after some technical hiccups, we might have John Hollywood for Club Aquarius on the boundary for us. We've got you there, Johnny. Yes, we now. Yeah, we've got you now, mate. Thanks for joining us here today, and uh, we decided to give you a little bit of drizzle to start the season, mate. Off to a great start. Well, I managed to get water on the microphone on the way out, didn't I? So it wasn't actually technical. It was only Hollywood issues. <laughs> uh, you, we all know you've got issues, mate, but certainly we're thankful <laughs> to having you on board again this year. What do you make of the two teams out there today, mate, and how do you see this one going? Oh, look, I'm like YouTube blokes. I'm just really excited. It's the start of the season. We get to see Club bring in these new players, how they improve, all that sort of stuff. So everyone wins today for me, so it's just a good case of, you know, seeing who's playing, who's doing what. Um, but I'm really excited about it. Ground's really, really slippery, boys. No wind to really talk of. Went out there in the middle, obviously, that sort of stuff. Um, but not too much wind at all, so it's not going to make such a difference. The ground's not heavy, though, boys. It's just going to be slippery for me. Beautiful. Thank you, Johnny Hollywood. We'll come back to you as the game goes on, as the team's lining up in the middle of Sarah Oval. First game for Premiership points here since late 2021. But South Gujarat still called this home. Umpire's just about ready to throw the ball up in the middle. Michael D. Fabrizio, Mitch Rod, and calling you to start this season 2024 is Pat Silcox. Thank you very much, Mitch Rod. Match of the day, our first for 2024. Up goes Atkins for the Robin Bell Houston Eagles. Almost won a dance at Tony Meza Testa. It's going to be hard to handle at ground level. High shot coming in early, I reckon, on Charlie Ford. Was it the new boy? He's going to pick up a free kick, just defensive side of centre. Smack bang in the middle here at Sarah Ovals. He goes off his left boot. Didn't quite strike as well as he would have liked, and it's intercepted nicely there by Jackson Penny for his. So waiting for it to drop is Jackson Penny. Goes down the line to half forward, balances the target, attacks it hard. He's almost on the second bite with the slot. Diving slips catch. Couldn't take it. Scrappy at half forward. That ball's going to be like a cake of soap going around today. Donald Tipper would be certainly the main man coming into the contest. He throws his body in. Big tackle from there. As we are at half forward here for Robin Bell Houston. Sorry, partner there for Imperials. Tap down there comes from Hickey. Ground level, Atkins does well. Scoops it out. Handball to the skipper in Turner. He's grabbed immediately. And sort of have a stand right there. Great spot the there, Red. Red. Probably, uh, probably isn't minding the wet too much. He was having to dive around and then give the bear hug uh, tackle on the bench as well. On the ground, sorry. So hards. Middle of the contest, as you would expect there for a man of his surname. Hickey tries to hack it forward off the toes. Can't get it. Quick handball from balance is good. McDonald's tipping Woody. He's held up at centre half forward here for Imperials. No score on the board as yet. We've gone a minute and a half in this opening term here, thanks to the team at the Wentworth District Community Bank. Up into the ball, the sky, the ball goes there at half forward. Nice, nice. intercept from the Eagles. Although here's a chance for Imps as the handle gets shot out there. Heavy clash on Brad Balance. Took the wind out of his sails, no doubt about that. It's still up for grabs though. Across half forward for. The green machine as Imps gets some numbers around the contest. It squirts out Bang. right there. A heavy hit on Raph Bulzomi. Umpire says it's fair though. A bit of push and shove. And uh, boys, someone who looks like Bulzomi still down after that contest. Uh, Raph's just getting to know each other a little bit better. It's 2024 campaign. It is WrestleMania. It's a nice old spine buster coming through for that. It might go down to John Hollywood on the boundary potentially. Go back to John in just a second as we try to get this mic worked up. As the free kick's been put out here, and it's Luke Hickey who's going to be taking a set shot at goal. About 45 degree angle on that right fourth flank. Gee, they missed this man last year. They had some injuries, didn't they, Paddy? He's going to make the world of difference being fully fit. We heard about uh, the two hip replacements from his good mate, uh, Wade Hancock, in the pre-match. 
front and centre is a good oh, read there by Jaden. Oh, 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 the afternoon at the two and a half minute mark. Goal to Jaden Fox and Imperials one straight six. Hey, the score. You match of the day on 106.7 Hot FM. Ents versus Robindale, Houston. Johnny, have you got us? Yeah, look, I've got you boys, and hopefully you've got me. As I said, I'm the one dribbling on the mic front for excitement, Dan. You're obviously the start of the season, so I'm causing more problems than I'm worth. But we didn't really talk about Luke here much. I know I didn't anyway. And just, just going through my head how good a player he was two or three years ago, he's very, very important to this lineup. So obviously we've talked about Galbraith coming back and, you know, Leeds Mazzini coming back and that sort of stuff. But he's a six foot five man. As long as his hips hold up, you don't lose your height and your ability, do you? Absolutely. Absolutely not, and certainly a man who can move like he can. Back in the middle of the ground, he's got a chance for the clearance again through Bryce Hards. Right foot kick forward, looking for Hickey again. Small comes over the top from Leslie. Ground level, Pilata. Handball. Good contact. He absolutely hit first off. He almost got away with one there. Brad Bowers was sitting there at the the pack, waiting to snap it, but the umpire had said it is a ball up. As Saw the matchup in the middle. It looked like Aaron Lasky was next to the meatballer. So I was calling the sub, I reckon, because he's a lot taller and a lot thinner from the man from Robinvale Houston. Down the line, good intercept mark, and that's been taken by Riley Fontaine, one of the recruits from Queensland. Yeah, he read it beautifully, though. His uh, ball in ball wasn't great. A heavy kick coming through there from the Eagles. Right, would have been a free right. kick, but the umpire said, no, Isaac right. Corbo, well, he knows nothing less. He just attacks the ball at 150%. Bit of style made there, out of side. Halfback for the Eagles. Haven't really had much success getting it past centre so far in the opening four minutes of this on, season boys. opener in Sarah Oval. The free kick now pulled out to the green machine again, and it's Bryce Hards who caught one high. Quick handball, the man running from the back end. I think Douglas, the shovel, long forward off hands, looking for Hickey. Turner's there at ground level. Gee, that's an optimistic-looking kick around the corner. Try. Really set a cast gear for camera. Oh. Here's McDonald tip and Woody. Yeah. And in the end, it was still well over the shoulder in the back. It was probably around the ears by the time he copped it. And we know how good he can be in front of goal here, Paddy. Deep on the boundary, left forward pocket. I think we all know exactly where he's going. Well, he's not so much in front of goal, but he's to the side of goal. But he's going to run around on the end and open it up. Let's uh, see if the Eagles try and close down his passageway. Here he goes, Tipper. Swings it around. He's pushed it. No, he's got it. Two straight 12, leading Robin Vale Houston yet to score. Michael D for Brizio. Fairy tale start for Anthony McDonald Tippenwood. Yeah, looking very dangerous inside that forward 50. Uh, it's just been getting near the ball, getting near it, and you know, basically took possession of that and uh, got taken high straight away. So uh, they're clearly worried about him and uh, putting a, elevating a few heart rates in that Robin Vale Houston back line right now. Certainly are, and we know the Eagles. Well known for their aggression, their contested ball work, Paddy. Right but work in there, Rob. Good boy. Giving away a few unnecessary free kicks for high tackles. Right work, Keep working. Just have to readjust from there. Is back into the middle of Sarah Oval. Two straight 12 Imperials. Rombo Houston yet to score. Neil might have been held without it. Ball lands in the lap of Brad Hards. Again, trying to bust his way through. Good tackle by Jimmy Zapia. Of course, wearing okay, okay, famous number 24 the of the Eagles. I was bared for his uncle, Don Falvo. It's almost an accidental teammate Falcon, I reckon, on Lasky going through the middle. Picked up a halfback by Ford, who just barrels it forward for the Eagles. First time inside 50, drop mark there by Buntain. Knocked over by Ethan Gill, who's followed up at ground level. And the big man who won his fifth club best in the last year. He's coming across in seven seasons, I believe, Paddy. What a pickup he's been over a number of years. He's been a great club man, Ethan Gill. As he gets that run hit out to advantage here for Pilata. Swipping head, orders and a half forward. It's a hot footy though. Here's Ford. Gets his kick away. Tip and Woody pushed him in the back after the fact. But Clail says the umpire. Hips decide to go to double knuckle there from Buntain. to get back to McDonald. Tip and Woody. And they're out wide there with a the shovel. Alex Douglas as he goes long. 11th Street side centre wing. Looking for balance coming right, to right, the right, center boys, wing. Good work coming over the top. At the back, Jack Taylor. One of the four Queensland recruits that Robin Bell used to have last year just kills it dead over the boundary line. Two straight 12 still for Imperials. Robin Bell used to get the score. Yeah, but Johnny, uh, good to see Tipper moving up field and uh, getting involved across uh, midfield and uh, half back, John. Yeah, anyone with his critics out there that said he wasn't fit enough, you can forget it. He's moving beautifully, boys, so he's just getting across the ground. No worries, he's just barrel chested and he's, he's hitting it hard. He certainly is so far. He's from Bell Houston at half forward. Pilata, who came all over the top looking for Gill, back to Pilata. Has to go backwards to go forwards, but I guess the kick towards 50 now was a nothing punt in the end and straight into the lap of Buntain. She tried to play on, he didn't see Benji Neal was there. Ran straight to the McLeod medal winner. He's going to take the advantage around the corner. Well, what is Benji it? bends it home. Lovely work there from the Eagles maestro. 
Robin Bell used in one straight six. Imperials, two straight twelve on that Kumiala Club scoreboard. Yeah, well, look, Bunte uh, did as advertised at the start of that play. Took the nice defensive 50 mark. That's what we were told he was he was good at. But then uh, just uh, didn't realise, I guess, that uh, he had a bit of company there. And uh, another Queensland uh, recruit from uh, last season from the other team just uh, bailed him up and got the ball back and had a nice snap at goal. So one back for the Eagles. Yeah, he's a physical player, Benji Neal, and he played that card to an absolute T. He's just having a, a great foot forward at the moment, so we get back underway in the middle here. Run by Matty Buick, one down by Atkins. They're hanging on at the back there, and a free kick to Lasky. I reckon that's the way it's going to go. Advantage is the call. They go through Prendergast up towards centre half forward. Tough one to hold overhead. In goes Valance in that left forward pocket. Getting plenty of attention from Ford. Ford manages to pick it up, but uh, didn't quite get the handball away effectively. All still on the deck. Right work, Day here in Mildura, so it's going to be tough, that one-touch footy we love, and we normally see on the hard, tough decks. Mitch is probably not a goer today. Uh, absolutely. Work, see a couple of the Resi's boys walking past us with the, uh, the Carlton drawing. Yes, it's something yes. that change depending on the weather here yes. in Southern Asia. But don't tip him way deep in the pocket. Goes with the left shoe. But just to the near side would have been spectacular. I was going to say, it's a bit too early to declare. Where are you, Good boy! Uh, but uh, that's the spot <laughs> they're doing it from. John, John, John Hollywood. Simon Callahan. He's not getting any younger. I'll tell you what, he's got a great rotation going on. There's Pilata. And, you know, and he's just getting swapped over all the time. So he's, he's got Isaiah Ross. Johnson just come on to him now. So he might be a veteran, but he knows who he's going to. Absolutely. Is uh, Mark taking a half back here for the Eagles. Chip down the line's not too bad. Wants a target. I see who they might be over the other side. Way on meanwhile. Down the 11th Street wing. Few Eagles flying. Off the hands of Corvo. Picked up at ground level by Bolzomi. Handball's backwards. Little kick looking for Johnson. That's a good oh, strong mark. Home. In front of Callahan. In fact, he's going to get the free kick for the chop of the arms. And as you said, Paddy Benji Neal starting deep as forward at the moment. He's got the entire 50 to himself. All right, so let's see what Izzy's going to do. He plays on outer side centre wing. Go to that left forward pocket. A two on one there for Imps. Chance though for the Eagles with Neil, who picks it up at grand level, opens his eyes, lovely kick looking back for Gill, the big fella couldn't quite get the jukes up and bring it down, but he's uh, lay an effective tackle to try and hold them up, went over the shoulder and hard here, I reckon that's going to be a first Burley coming across there, wasn't it, T-Bat, real desperation in defence, long down the line, big attempt to mark from Luke Hickey, he's got the overlap run coming from Lasky, Goes down towards the half yeah. forward. Right Took a little bit off it. Fox couldn't right hold it. Good Fox yeah. Follows up well at ground level. But Donald Tipper Woody socks it oh. inside 50. In fact, I think this kicking in danger call yeah. there. Right, right. Cricket going the way of the Eagles. Bit of a check side soccer there, which is interesting. But uh, one, one thing both sides are doing is they're doing that Tom Hawkins roll up forward uh, to give their main rucks relief. So you've got Adkins playing uh, up against Riley Burns for most just of the ruck. Right. Then when it gets forward, um, Hickey takes over for him. And at the other end, it's Ethan Gill. Right Hards. Oh, Had a fair bit of it so far. Short is good. Strong mark taken there by Lasky. He's looking forward now. Long down the line, but didn't get as much as he wanted onto it. Could be not a bad result in the end, though. Bounces and hits the outer point post. And we'll have a boundary throw in in the left forward pocket. 2 one thirteen Imperials. Robin Bell used to one straight six. We've gone nearly 11 minutes in this opening term of footy in 2024. Just didn't quite use it as well as he might have last year. I reckon he's butchered just a couple off the boot. Tough day, as I said, wet footy. Hard to get it uh, going exactly where you need it to be, but he's certainly where the action is. Hickey. And Luke Hickey has got the third on board for Imperials. 3-1-9-2, they go on the Kumiela Club scoreboard. They lead Robin Vale Houston one straight six. We played 11 minutes in this opening quarter. And uh, down to you, John Holly. We're not sure there's a heap of breeze out there, but the Green Machine are making uh, that city end the scoring end at the moment. Look, they certainly are, boys. I wouldn't have said this much. Fred. Maybe I would have said maybe a length or a goal, but that's about it. Nothing much, boys. I was out in the middle before the game, and there really wasn't a lot there. It's just more impact. Look at their back line, boys. It's all the old blokes we've been calling for, you know, 10 years. And they've, they've got one to carry. They don't have to work all the time you in the centre. They're, they're picking both up and the run, 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 Certainly are. Oh, yeah. Centre of Sarah Over. Justin Nayland gets his first taste of footy so far today. Over the head handball from Dion Cameron. Missed his target from Knocker Nayland. Pretty good tackle from McHugh. As it takes him to ground level. Established a 13 point lead already in this game. Imperials off to a sprightly start. Especially considering the weather. The ball is slippery out there at the moment. Burns taps down. Neil gets the handball away. Joey Mezzatesta avoids the tackler. Handball not great. Cannon Hurley at the bottom of the pack. And another stalemate straight in the centre of Sarah Oval. Imperials leading Robin Bale Houston by 13 points. Pull back up into the skies. Almost a chance for 
Yenko to get that one on the way through. Little kick around the corner up here towards right half forward is not bad. Here is Simon Callahan, the veteran. Left it behind him, no chance for Johnson. About 55 out. Quick handball was okay. They get him brought to Yenko who puts it high into the sky. Who's going to stand underneath this way? Good defensive spoil from Ems to get it out of the danger zone momentarily. Then it comes back in there from Neil. Ball on the deck is missed there by Anthony Mezzatesta. He's Neil again, gets a quick kick away. He's got the answers back there, though, but couldn't hang on to the mark. Here's Johnson. Is he taken over the shoulder? You bet he is. And Isaiah Johnson will take this free kick, attacking the City Oval end here at number three. The concern for is as he tries to get to his feet. Slight angle to deal with Mitchie around about 25, 30 metres out. Almost an NFL quarterback style, wasn't it, there, Dave? That were inside to slide feet first and uh, in the end caught one around the chops, but... The Blair medal winner from last year was so good in front of the big sticks. Important for him to get a good start, you feel? Exactly. Uh, uh, remember this, boys, he's on zero right now, so I'll uh, <laughs> soon forget about that uh, as the tally starts ticking over. But uh, had an ex excellent season last year, and uh, on that form, he's going to kick this. So Isaiah Johnson looking to put the second on the board for the Eagles. The Eddie Wonder Avenue end. Tucked it slightly, but it's still going to be straight through the big no, sticks, and he loves it. it. First goal of the season for Isaiah Johnson. I reckon that's going to be called quite a few times here on Hot FM footy. Rumbo Houston, two straight 12. Imperials, 3-1-19 on that scoreboard. John Hollywood, Isaiah Johnson was so dynamic last year, and how important is he going to be again for the structure of this side? Oh, look, very much so. And I think we have to be honest and be realistic in regards to it. We went into that grind final last year with injuries. You could see it when he was dropped out. I talked before the game. He didn't want to talk to me because he knew I was going to ask him and ask him questions. So he barely shouldn't have been there for my eyes. But he was a tremendous player last year. To me, he was the best power forward in the comp, but he's, he's roughly my height. Go figure, Johnny. Here's we get back for another start. Just having a look at some of the matchups. Looks like Braden Turner's going with Tipper at the moment there across half back for the Eagles. I reckon they'll run a few numbers on Anthony across the course of the afternoon. Cameron lost his feet. So opens up a chance here for Dart Hurley. The tackle from behind. Just stripped him of the footy. The Eagles have got a bit of run and carry going now. So they come back in again here through Deal and Camera gets into the hot spot looking for Corby just inside the forward 50. A bash and crash from him as Hurley gets back to the contest, squirts it back. Corvo again from behind. Man. Free kick could go to that Ims. Now Colby has steady oh, short little one around here for Jasmine. Yeah, 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 Fizz, great to see him back up and running once again this year. Down the line, which is pretty good. Big score coming from Pilar over the back. Oh! Oh! The first time last year, right, left it behind. Pilar at the bottom of the pack, and I reckon he might have a little astray. Did. No Pilar. Back on the airways in 2024. Pallada, not a great kick in the end. Buntane should take the slide and grab it. Does. Intercepts across half back. Quick kick to the cheese. Colby Hard to be able to much so far. Good hustle from Buntane to make that happen there because uh, the Eagles may well have been away. Let's go down the line again. For McNally, broadcast to that lead heart. Oh, he's moving beautifully. Center wing, he uh, distributes inboard to find Lasky. He's had plenty of it in this first quarter. A little up and under towards center half four. It wasn't easy for the fours to stand under. And four just drags one of the Imps boys out of the contest. Could have been a free kick. Nothing doing, says the umpire. And we're going to get a star mode there in the true centre half forward position for Imps. They're attacking the city end of number three. We thought deep out that Charlie Ford might be playing more on board, but it seems like he started more of a centre half back position. Yeah, that's right, and has sort of rebounded a bit off there uh, a bit as well. So Neil stumps the ball out of the pack. At the back is Douglas. Little kick from Balzomi, trying to gain some territory. Just the rolling, mauling scrum going at the moment. No one can get any advantage except for Brad Hartz. How often have we said that over the years? Spike down, Douglas with the inside 50. Takes a little bit off it, but Donald Tipper and Woody might have been held. Oh, running back yes. the pocket, a chance for Tipper! Cowboys oh, missed it. Oh, he did everything to kick the goal. It was a fantastic setup. But this is the kind of thing that he can bring to the table here, D-Bab, because you can just see everyone starting to rise in that forward pocket. Yeah, he sold enough candy that uh, after Braden Turner's uh, f boss uh, might have just, uh, <laughs> down a bit there, but uh, great job uh, to at least create a bit of excitement. What, the overdrawn, I reckon, after that? Maybe, but... Uh, Anyhow, yeah, that's what he's going to bring to the table this year. He might not get it all the time, but geez, the excitement he's going to bring is going to be something else. Yeah, bring on those dry windy days. Looking over at number one as the balls have been cleared out of danger by the Eagles to the outer side there at half back. He's got the numbers there, though, as the hand pass comes up from Jackson Penny. They go back to find it again, the Eagles. Numbers around the ball. They can't seem to find the extraction they're looking for. And we've seen a bit of this in these wet conditions. Ball being held up there across half back. I reckon the umpire might have dug out a free kick there at the very last moment. One over the shoulder. The other way of the green machine. 
and Alex Douglas plays on to advantage. High up and under towards centre half forward, Balance the main man, brings it to ground. Diving on it, there was camera, couldn't take it. Now Balance receives the handball from McNally for his first in green and white. He's put it to the near side and that right half forward. So Imps just missing a couple of opportunities. Although both been pretty tough, 3-3-21. Three, three, Robin Bay Houston, two straight 12. Down to you, Johnny, for Club Aquarius. Brad Valance, we had a bit of a chat about him in the pre-match. He looks like a new man out there. He is uh, really moving well. He looks fantastic, doesn't he? And if he does pick up a little nickel... Got to go, Reds! Reds. Got to go! Nelly playing center forward, a little kicky pushing up. So if Brad can go as deep as he wants, and I tell you what, he's a problem real deep forward. So he is... He looks good at the moment, though. The skill's not great there in defense from Robin Bay Houston. Kick back in for it's going to be taken the last line by Benji Neal, who we saw is the deepest forward before. Not a great kick, but Atkins does well to back it up. Neal with the one two. Handballs for Matty Cameron. Back to Neal again. He's just racking up possessions down the line at the moment. Looking at White. Oh! What a tackle, a tackle by yeah. Pizzo Valley. Maybe a little oh. stiff there, Tessa Testa, but the free kick for holding the ball. Quick handball comes to McHugh. Love a little dig Ready to Brad Just covering territory hey, beautifully. Hey, come again. Almost on his range on a dry day here from just on the 50 metre arc. The heavy wet ball might be a bit of a challenge for him, but he's going to light up a little of punt here. D-Fab on the left in this left forward pocket. If anyone can, I reckon Bradley can. Oh, absolutely. He's going to give it his vest. And uh, shout out to Jared Nelly. Just the, the big tackle there in the wet. He's taking a couple of marks as well. He's uh, looking pretty good. So Brad Hards on that trusty left foot of his. Looks pretty good off the boot. It's going to be across the goal square. You know, almost landed in the lap of balance at the back, but it did carry through for a minor score in the end. Last three scoring shots, all minus four Imperials. 3-4-22. He's got a 10-point lead over Robin Bale Houston. Two straight 12. As we hit on just about 20 minutes in this opening term of football here on Hot FM in 2024. The skipper for the Eagles, Braden Turner. Long kick out of defence. Just good mark by McNally. Umpire says not paid, though. Little stiff there. Quick handball out of the pack. Comes from Briganti. Out towards centre wing. It's going to be shuffled off the boot and we'll have a boundary throw in right in front of the advertising boards there on the 11th Street wing. Down to you, Johnny. Interesting to see the Eagles are really pressing up the field, aren't they? Not many behind uh, the ball or inside that attacking 50. Yeah, that's the way they've always played, I reckon, Batty. Certainly under the, the coach at the moment, there's no doubt about that. They love to get up and run, push back, all that sort of stuff. Just looking at Fizz McNally at the moment. Isn't that last marking contest? He's still haunched over on the ground. I was hoping he'd only just lost the boot, but he hasn't got up. I'm just moving now. Yeah, that's not a good sign there for Fizz, who, of course, is such an important player, but at least he's up and walking around, so that's a good sign going ahead. As it looks like that rain's starting to come down a little bit more here at Sarah Oval. Ten-point lead for Imperials, 20 minutes into this opening turn. Potential new home at Sarah Oval, as we said, Benji Hill. We just saw him at full back. He's back to full forward again, Paddy. He's covering the case so far. Sure is, as we get that reload on the outer side at centre wing. He's going looking for the footy. Good pressure coming in from Antonio Mezzatesta. Kick goes into the trees almost over the fence on that outer side. I reckon my 6 5 just a little bit of out of danger around about 50 metres from there, so all is well. Davo's uh, F-150 over the other side. I reckon the advertising board was almost in some danger. Yeah. All right, so uh, we're going to get a, a ball in. It's almost at half forward right, as it were, for Imps, who had a lot of footy at this end of the ground in this opening 20 or 21 minutes of the 2024 season. Front centre, Riley Burns tried to knock it down to advantage. Ball hits the deck. Chance here for Pilata. Had trouble keeping his feet. Now, quick kick is a camera off his left. He goes up the line. Another Pilata in the mix here, but he's had the answers. Little quick kick from Colby Hardens into that rain there. Gets inside the forward 50. That goes uh, the new boy, Charlie Ford, hitting a pretty heavy tackle. He's going to slip over the sideline and we'll get a toss in. Maybe slightly unlucky, Jaden Fox. you got a nice little bit of a forearm in the back there, but... Nothing paid as Don Tipper Woody again as you would expect. Tackle inside the forward 50. I don't know if there's too many statisticians taking those numbers this year, Paddy, but I reckon they'd be working overtime. Oh, yes. The axe is all over it. He certainly is at the moment. Tap down for Ganty, kick out at defensive 50 for the Eagles, but not a great one. Nice mark by Regan Scott. Nice to see him back after some injury issues as well. We'll hold down a key, position, a key defensive post for Imperials. High up and under inside the forward. Big. Balance is going to come from the side. Fox at the back. Chance here again for Jaden. He can't quite pick it up. Sorry, Tough Jayden. body work. Johnson. And now Foster to try and get it out for Robin Bale Houston, but they can't find any passage at all so far, Paddy. The pressure is relentless from the green machine. And it is. They're still trying to work their way along the line here, but now his chance for him. Shot back in board here for an opportunity for Willow Donald. Oh, oh, 
off the boot of Jackson Penny. They go to centre half forward. Even has got the numbers this way. What do you think here? I reckon that's a 50 50 at best for me. Free kick's going to go though. The way Darcy Hogarth, I reckon, is about 55 out. At San Mateo Avenue, any hand passes quickly to Lasky. Oh, 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 first goal in the SFN World for Aaron Lasky and Imperials are going beautifully. You match the right hot air fans. Oh, 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 uh, Robinvale well, used to beg your pardon, two yeah. straight 12. We ticked over 23 yeah. minutes opening yeah. turn, Mitchie. They've clearly done a lot of work together, haven't they, Deepak, this pre-season? Because Darcy Hogarth knew immediately to handball to last year. That never looked like this one. Oh, absolutely. Obviously, he's familiar with uh, how far he can kick it. The 150 uh, game player from Noosa, who is. Uh, yeah, captain that side and uh, brought them a lot of leadership. He's uh, really bringing the young ones along too. John Hollywood from Club Aquarius on the boundary. I reckon that's a good way to announce yourself to the competition. Yeah, look, they do say that he's a fantastic kicker. He just proved that. It's a very slippery day, boys, and he got that distance, no worries. Just while we got you, Johnny, Jared McNally off the ground there looking a bit sore. Oh, I'm looking a bit cocky, but he seems to be alright. He got off pretty quick, and he's no, not looking at him at all. He just waved him until he was fine. Maybe a bit knackered, some of these guys, but even just looking. He got Nice tackle there from Will O'Donnell to catch Ethan Gill holding the ball. So that tackling pressure from Imperials is right up and running so far against last year's grand finalists. Short kick to last year, the most recent goal kicker. Centre of Sarah over, wheels and goes. Long down the line, looking for Hickey. They're getting back to the Punches it down. Here's McDonald tipping Woody. Great right hand. Great snap. Oh, He's got two in the first quarter. What a start for the home side here today. McDonald tipping Woody. Almost like someone pressed pause and all the other players on the yes. ground, they stood back and watched him pick it up and hoover it and kick it absolutely beautifully in that left ball. Right. He's got two already, would you believe, in this opening quarter at Imps. I'm making a statement, it must be said, here at Sarah Oval. 5 4 34 leading the Eagles. Two straight 12 as you're back underway. Another value is we're going to try and find some centre clearances. They just can't seem to get going from the midfield. Here's Oyenko. Gets it around the corner to Atkins. He didn't really want it at that particular time. Imps got the answers again as they go through Lasky. A bit of an awkward looking left, but some good penetration. Up the line there looking for Luke Hickey. Ball on the deck. Here come the Eags. Just can't seem to hang on at the moment there across half back and Imps. Get it through Colby Hards. Good tackle there from Mesut Testa. It's still off the grabs. Leslie shoots it out. Yenko gets a hand pass, but gee, the pressure, Mitch. They absolutely are. It's a city under siege right now in Robinvale. A chance to pick up, though, for uh, the number 24, Jimmy Zapier, going back. It's four. He's kicked again, just not hitting the target there. These ones are in the make in the wet. And it is hard work for the Didn't see much at all I mean, the conditions certainly aren't favouring them right now, but you think you would see a little bit of hands from Yeah, that certainly has plenty of questions asked of them this first stanza as Corlo gets up high, couldn't quite bring it to ground. Here's a chance here for the Eagles to find an option through Matthew Campbell, but he's near the kick away there to Colby Hards. Must have been touched off the beat because he marked and played on instantaneously there at centre wing on the broadcast side. At left half forward, we sit here with Imps in attack to look for options, but Braden Turner goes wide to try and get a bit of separation on that outer side. Dale Cameras, his man, if it sits, he's in the boat, but he can't stay on his feet. And then he's got one in the back, just tripping the back of him. And now Bolzomi's going to take the advantage. Could be downfield, umpire says no, it's okay. Lasky punched away from him. Nice work by Mesotesta. Both Mesotestas, in fact, back to Corvo. Just a little slippery still in there. Imps pressure's enough to really put the clamps on the red, white, and black so far. We're going to have another stalemate right in front of that. Kumiala Club scoreboard, 5 4 34. Four Imperials, Robin Bay Houston, two stroke 12. Really getting some rain now as well, so it's starting to really influence things. So a chance here again for the Eagles. They're going backwards to go forwards, but just haven't been clean enough. The on camera. Sliding in a little bit. Oh, oh, and there you hear the oh, oh, siren. I reckon Imperials would be absolutely over the moon with that first quarter. Two goals for Anthony McDonald, Tip and Woody, and a long bomb from Queensland recruit Aaron Lasky. 
to start proceedings here today. Quarter time, Imperials 5-4-34, meaning Robinvale used to two straight 12. That's thanks to the team at the Kumiala Bank, Wentworth and District. Mitro, Pat Silcox, Michael D. Fabrizio up here in the box, and John Hollywood will be down on the boundary to hopefully give us a rapid quarter time. We'll be back in a couple of moments' time to bring you the second quarter of action on 106.7 Hot FM. District can help you decide the right solutions for your banking needs. They not only give you access to award-winning financial products and services, but are also committed to returning profits to our local communities. You can also bank securely online using e-banking or the Bendigo Bank app. Get in touch with Community Bank Wentworth and District Branch about your banking needs today. The financial services may be organised into a server or store and can even be set up. Community Bank may not be your choice, but it's still good to know your business. Michael D. Fabrizio, Ben Ridley, John Hollywood on the sideline, and Max Hollingworth, who's just about ready to rip into some stats for us here at quarter time. And uh, what a quarter it was from the Green Machine. 5 4 34. They lead by 22 over Robin Vale, Houston, two straight 12 uh, goals in that opening stanza. Two for McDonald, Tip, and Woody. Singles for Jaden Fox, Luke Hickey, and Aaron Lasky. Meanwhile, for the Eagles. On a piece for Benji Neal and Isaiah Johnson. So a 22-point break for the Green Machine. Let's uh, check in for the first time in the match with our man Max Hollingworth. Let's go to the Green Machine first and uh, give, us, give us those numbers, please, there, big boy. So to begin with, Anthony McDonald and Woody had eight possessions, two tackles, two girl goals and two behinds. Beautiful. Who have you got next? Aaron Lasky was also great with seven possessions, two marks and a goal. Brad Hards was solid. Yeah, Brad Hards was solid with... Five disposals, two marks, and one behind. And what have you got on new coach Brad Balance? Brad Balance is quiet with just three possessions. Okay, over to the Robin Vale Houston Eagles. Uh, Benji Neal, he was very busy. Yeah, Benji Neal was superb with nine possessions, two marks, one tackle, and a goal. He was doing it at both ends of the ground as well. A new boy, Charlie Ford. Charlie Ford was okay with just three possessions. With a quiet start for Isaac Corbo on the eight. Yeah, he only had two possessions. All right, and we'll finish up uh, with Isaiah Johnson. Isaiah Johnson was also quiet with just two possessions and a goal. Okay, good on you, Max. So we'll check back in with you at half time here in our match of the day on 106.7 Hot FM. Ben Ridley, you're alongside him. And we'll quickly uh, uh, get out to John Hollywood shortly. He's uh, out there at the huddles. They're pretty much almost side by side, so I'm guessing you can probably hear both <laughs> of uh, the coaches' addresses. What did you make of that first turn, mate? It was very interesting structurally, uh, looking at it from afar there, Silco. You could just see how well set up that Imperials were, not only behind the football, but in front. They had a really straight line forward line, which allowed them to be able to create space in those pockets. And that's where the ball was coming in nice and direct uh, into either pocket so that you got the likes of Tiff and Brad Valance and these guys to be able to run onto it. They had a beautiful...
beautiful press coming in to try and keep that ball inside the attacking half. Robinvale started very fast, so Robinvale took up all their space yep. and then become very predictable. They started to run the ball down the, uh, as you said, especially on the outer scoreboard side. Ince knew exactly where they were going. Ince didn't know the commitment players. They backed their players in and they allowed themselves to be able to get that free space coming through the corridor. Lasky got onto it a couple of times as well and uh, guided the ball in uh, nice and directly. So at the moment, Ince are just using the ground much better. Robinvale, too predictable and just too clustered at this stage as well. Great summation for you. Ben Ridley, uh, quickly down to you, John Hollywood. Uh, you're out of the huddles here at quarter time. What did you glean? Oh, I just sitting close to the bus. I got to hear both. But you said so. I got to hear both, which is really good. Well, look, I pushed to the influence. I wanted to see what the main message was from Braden. Obviously, he was really, really happy. Just said intent was the main thing. Um, Brad, sorry, Benny's right onto it, though. That line up, regards to how they line up. Have a look at how thin they are at forward. Um, they'll push forward if they can't get it. One will push wide, but generally that ball will go straight down that centre line, and that's where they're hitting, hitting the targets up from the centre line. So they're, they're, they're just using straight down the centre of the ground. South's not the biggest ground, and they're doing the right thing. Bromwell tend to push the flanks, and they shouldn't be in some cases, especially on this slippery day, but it's more about the intent, I think. And out of battle as we uh, get set for a start in the second one. turn. Quickly uh, to you, Defab, maybe two or three of your best for both sides. Oh, certainly Lasky uh, with those 50-metre kicks inside 50 uh, for inches. Yeah, well, well, the tipper with his... Uh, Presence up forward is uh, going to be very dangerous. Oh, yeah, so, uh, as we said, we've uh, got underway here in the second term. Quick whistle going the way of the Eagles. It's not just going to come back to Benji Neal. He's uh, pretty much in the dead set middle here at Sarah Oval, looking to go directly down the channel. In fact, they'll end up going wide out towards the right forward pocket, looking for big Ethan Gill to stand underneath it. Look at the hands from Johnson as he swings it around the corner and he says, Hey, Chipper, I can do what you want. What a goal that was. At the 30-second mark of the Lord. Absolutely swooped in on that. And as you said, just uh, Tipper-like. He was like a cat coming through there. As soon as the ball left their hands there, a big kill comes running through, snaps it uh, at right angles. And Defab, it must be that corner down there because oh, there's yeah. been a couple of special shots already. Oh, absolutely. We probably should have seen this coming. I mean, easy Johnson versus McDonald, Tip and Woody at uh, either end. It's a, it's a pretty uh, heavyweight matchup, isn't it? Oh, it's worth the uh, entry fee, that's for sure. That it is. If uh, Dave I gave him a bit of a rev up at quarter time, that's exactly what he's looking for. He did, he did bring well, them in nicely once, uh, during that speech uh, in the middle there, so must have revved them up. Right, here we go again with Brad Hards this time. Brad! getting the clearance. It's a bit of time to separate and use his left foot looking there for McDonald, Tip and Woody. Good work from Braden Turner to clear the danger. Ball hits the deck. Over the top of there is Charlie Ford. And we'll get a ball up here. He's a likely oh, top channel forward, isn't it? Yeah, he is. He's, uh, he's going to be dangerous across our back. He's sort of that in-between build at the moment. As we see the two big Ruckman Burns, taps it down only as far as it looks like uh, down the bottom there is Zapia. Still handball friendly as the ball hits the ground. Nice little toe poke out of trouble there from Adkins. Ball quickly spills out there to ball zone. He gets oh, away with it on his left, and he's going to get a free kick right on the half-forward flank in front of this uh, very attractive crowd down here at the moment. Very okay. attractive lights out that's right in front of us too. Which, uh, we obviously missed the last couple of seasons doing it here at Sarah. Forget about things quickly. It is really a good ground to commentate from though as uh, the Eagles continue on this possession march here as the ball sent it up nicely there by Kelly Mesa Testa into the breadbasket of Dion Cameron. Now you reckon with maybe a bit of a heavier ball this might just be outside his range. He's going to play on. Looks to lay a shepherd to open it up for Benji Neal. He's got a thumping right foot kick. It's going to stay out to the left though and a minor score the result so it's Robinvale used some 3 on 19 on the Cuniello Club scoreboard. Inks at 5 4 34. Defo, we ticked over two and a half in this second turn. Yeah, no, I really like the work of uh, Riley Burns in the ruck against uh, the, the, the biggest Simon of um, Atkins. He's uh, really doing his, his best to get his body in the way and prevent him from doing what he normally does. Beautifully grabbed there to our ground level there by McNally. The ball's in dispute. Still out on that half forward flank. Big Atkins to Corvo, sorry. Tries to bustle his way through. Gets it off to a running Johnson. He's just too far out to score. He tries to send it up with a wobbly kick. It's just punched forward nicely there by Gill. Gives his uh, teammate an opportunity to score off the ground. But it looks like it was Bulzoni on his left foot there, just getting a goal out of nothing. And it was just a really good hustle forward. There was no clean possession there at all. Just a nice couple of little taps. Corvo just... Uh, just really trying to surge the ball forward as far as he can. But I'll tell you what, it was actually that grubby kick that went in there by Johnson that actually made it work because it was a little bit unpredictable. Yeah, and you got to chalk down the knuckle there for me. Oh, it not to advantage. I mean, that it was really just a set nice it up. One, wasn't yeah, it? just put it to advantage. And yeah. Bulzomi showed some really good goal smarts there, Defab. Under pressure, real balanced left foot yeah. and kicked it well. Oh, that's it. It's uh, coming a bit of a day for small forwards at the moment, uh, which is, is pretty understandable in the conditions. So. Well, it looks like it's a scoring end. There's got to be yeah. some breeze there, surely. Yeah. You get the feeling. We'll get down to Johnny maybe in a, a second or two just to check that out as Neil gets another possession. Front and centre is big Ethan Gill at centre-half forward. Picked it up right in the end and goes back to Neil. He just overrun it. He's good enough to come back and do it. He's nicely, though. Not 
the uh, the 21 Lasky that got hold of him there. He's a player. He is a player, and uh, he'll take this free kick from the true centre half back position. Directs the traffic to centre wing out of side. Gill gets back there to make a menace of himself though. He's got the numbers around the footy. Comes out now for the Eagles. Chance here for uh, the 44 in Antonio Mezzatesta. Still up for grabs. He's just going to hold it back nicely and uh, wait. A, a good kick to Jack Taylor there, centre wing on the 11th Street side. Yeah, Jack Taylor just goes for the safety. He goes short, but drop there what he should have taken forward. The uh, recruit, and he's made some hard work for himself. He gets it back, looking for Corvo. Corvo's got to try and figure out what he's going to do. That could have been touched off the boot. And is it out of bounds on the full, or was it actually touched? Yeah, it's called on the ball. Signaled the out of the ball. It looked like it was touched. It looked like it was touched. So a short kick inside. Ims are just starting to structure up that little spread that they have. That's a horrid kick going forward, and kicks it straight into the big man Ethan Gill. You couldn't have picked him out of nice Down to you, Johnny. This breeze has picked up a bit. We're factoring that Sam Matteo in as the scoring in. Yeah, look, it's certainly picked up a bit, boys, but I wouldn't have said it was, you know, four or five goals, that sort of stuff. It's certainly favouring that. If you look at the trees across there at 11th Street, they're not blowing by any means, yeah. but there's certainly enough out there. Is that, well, it's hit the goal line, oh, I don't think it's that's hit the goal line. Hit the uh, soccer there off the uh, goal line, it's come back out off the goal line by his leg, I thought. No, I, don't, I thought the same. Yeah, but it's uh, allowed to go through for a minor score in the end, but, yeah, a couple of really good opportunities. There's a bit of push and shove on the ground there. Harry Prendergast is uh, certainly having a bit of a... Dosey Dole on the ground there with one of the Eagles boys, but gee, I would have thought that'd be a point straight thought, up for hitting yeah, the goal for I really it. thought it was, and um, 50 gets out. so there's a 50, obviously the Robinvale boys are sitting there trying to uh, let the Inns guys know that they thought the same as us, but Colby Hards here lets to go into his older brother and Brad Hards, he tries to run on, he gets onto his favourite left, goes up just outside the attacking it's 50, great finds kick. Riley Burns, Riley Burns getting himself in good position, drops, spills the ball, but retains possession, he looks to go back inside, oh, very, very well done there by Robinvale. Vale's Dion Kemra. He's taken on two of the Imps players. Ball goes in. They're just not grabbing this cleanly enough at the moment. Robin Vale, they've just got to move it forward. As they try to surge through, they get it back into the comfort of Corvo. Quick kick around the corner and a long 50-metre kick looking for Gill. Again, couple to beat. Beautifully roved off the pack as we see Joey Mezzatesta. He goes in short looking for Isaiah Johnson. He spins his uh, opponent just out of the way but then Great swings way. over yes. at the worst possible time. And it looks like the ball... I can't see past that post at the moment. It looks like the ball uh, is stuck in behind our uh, big light pole. Yeah, it was good work there back there from Simon Callahan. He got it out to Regan Scott. They were under all sorts of pressure. But it's coming back their way, though, as uh, Robin Bale Houston... Have a snap in that right forward pocket. It was smothered. His camera, he's dangerous at ground level. It just squirts yeah, towards yeah. that right hand behind post. It's going to go over the line and we'll get a ball in at the six and a half minute mark. It's uh, really tight enough, hasn't it, Both cameras are uh, getting involved there and uh, we might see a few camera snaps this afternoon. Ball back into play, right forward pocket. San Matteo, end of uh, number three. Knocked down there by Gill. Couldn't quite get it to Bullzoni. He went to ground. And he Brad Hards. He distributes a nice looking handball. Go, 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 go. Taken here by Balance. Rhodes one up, just pops it up to advantage. Going back with the okay. front, might be a free kick. Gee, Jaden right. Fox, what are you going to do? He says to the umpire, is it play on? Chance here for the Eagles, Pilata. Look to right up, Tick and Woody is lurking. Is a chance for Mesa Tester. Gets it over to Antonio. That was Percy no Anthony. All up at centre wing broadcast off the rack. It's did well, the big fella. Candy. Then he uh, tries to get it on board to Yenko, but uh, missed the target. It's uh, unfashionable footy at the moment, but it's tough and hard around the pitches. This is fantastic. I'll tell you what, that set up the hard thing. Just be able to have the composure and skill to hold the ball. Yep, not panic and give out that right handball, but gee whiz, we are saying uh, some wet weather football as Big Gill taps it down as far as looks like that was Ayanko. Ayanko just hacks it forward, running onto it is Neil and tries to go with the one hand. It's not the weather for that today. Pallada turns it oh! to the could have been caught uh, holding the ball near and again looking to go further back looking for Mezzatesta. He quickly uh, is wrapped up there and Imperials, just that pressure around the contest at the moment okay, is uh, really starting to put that heat on Robinvale and they really don't know what to do when they get the ball at the moment. Well, they point break for Imps in the second term here at Sarah Oval, 106.7 Hot FM, 8 minute mark. Chance here for Pilata. Quick kick, he had a bit of an air swing at that at ground level. Quick kick around the corner, clears the danger for Imps to centre wing, looking for Tipper. Good work from Turner and knock it to advantage. He was heavy with the contact, but fair into the side for Ethan Gill. No 
chance for the Eagles. They measure one nicely down the line. Mark taken by Yenko as he plays on. He's got one on there at centre half forward and Neil, but just over hit the footy. If it sits up though, Benji might make this work. He's trying to run oh, through him. Oh, oh, trying to break the tackle rugby league style. Oh, Riley Bunt over the top. Has that been marked, I reckon, there? About two metres out, going back with the flight. Couldn't quite pick up who it was, Defab, but gee, that was a oh, very yeah, just good flunk. Just a couple of Queenslanders playing a bit of rugby. Uh, yeah, so they like they've yeah. gone the wrong way. He was running off the back fence, yes. the first hit up of the game. <laughs> Bunt's Hayne did not take a step back at all there. Just put his head down. And, uh, well, I'll tell you what, as you said, calling it a tough game. That's as tough as you get from both Neil and Bunt Hayne. Yeah, it's uh, just a nail and he's taken the catch and lines up the shot. It's a lazy off work there from Knocker as he pushes it across the face. So they would have loved that, wouldn't, wouldn't they, the Eagles? 4-3-27 they go to now on the Kumiela Club scoreboard. Imps 5-4-34. We've ticked over nine and a half in the second term. Johnny Hollywood, what about that Benji Neil play? As I said... Well, Stephen Brocker, Roach off the back fence, first tackle straight through the line. I thought it was back at Lane Park. He was in the rugby league there for a minute. They just went straight at it. Didn't, no dodging candy there. They were just coming straight through. Yeah, I love it. As uh, We'll get to you in a minute. Riddles is a bit of concern there for Isaiah Johnson. Johnson. He's hobble off got a limp. Yeah, so maybe he's injured that ankle that he had trouble with last year, which is not great for the visitors. As Imps methodically worked their way through the midfield. Kick there from Brad Hards. Bounce off the pecs there of Brad Barrett. In goes Fox, though. Bryce Hards has just come onto the ground. He's an option free here on this half forward flank for Turner. Yeah. Takes the saving mark for the Eagles. He didn't they need that defense? Yeah, well, Turner's doing a, a few nice things here on the, the big matchup on uh, McDonald's if and Woody, so he'll be uh, growing in confidence. I think he'll be happy to see this one go out of bounds if it can because uh, there's a lot of work for the Dylan Adkins to do over there. There was a three on one, but he's pushed away from attack, I reckon. He has, so it's a nice little kick comes inside to Scott. So Imperials looking again to go to the outer side of the ground, and that's a beautiful kick. He finds Hurley. So Hurley just takes a nice one player spread again. Laxty is there if he needs. Sorry, that's hard. He elects to go further down the ground looking for Hickey. Hickey's got Corvo to beat. Beautifully roped off the pack there by Young Zapier. And spilled back out by Turner. Probably not a great oh, kick. Right, look, didn't he? right back in, he did. And Buntain again just finding that right spot. He's going to look short again for Hickey. Uh, oh, he's going to be further away from goals than he'd probably like to be at this stage. So give him a sign. Yes, Johnny. Bit of an idea of Ronchin uh, update. Yeah. Young Andrew, which is really good. Just got a knock in his quad. So this looks like a curvy boy. So that's good news. Right. Right. Typical wet winter's footy day uh, injury, that one, isn't it? As, uh, Chancey for Fox to launch himself in the right forward pocket. Oh, oh, uh, smashed in a very good tackle there by McDonald Tip and Woody. Giving away quite a few points there. Oh, but, uh, didn't keep going, the issue. Good kick, kick there for McNally on goal. Oh, oh, we had 35-48 oh, as well out of bounds on the full side. So chance for the Eagles to just readdress the situation. Yeah, just oh, settle oh, things oh, down a bit. Well, you're just having a look again. So you can start to see that they're actually trying to spread the ground a little bit further here. So they're just trying to create that space, which is great. Turner still elects to go long down the line. He's going to look for Gill. He was just absolutely manhandled there by Big Riley Burns. Parada, he gets a quick handball out to Iyanko. Punches it forward. They've got to start doing it all of that. Nice quick handball off there to the running Zapia. Goes further down the line and really well fought there from behind there at half-back by Young Buntain. He's been a really good pick-up so far and looks a likely type across half-back for Imperials. Yeah, Johnny, you just get the feeling the Eagles are uh, a little bit light and lean across half four. They put the uh, kick up to a contest, but there's no one to take a catch. I mean, obviously, uh, the big fellow who suspended would have been the man, Liberata, but uh, they just haven't quite got an option across half four at the moment. Yeah, that's their struggle point, isn't it? There's no doubt about that. They're getting it to half forward and, and him to rebounding it beautifully at the moment. Always oh, in dispute. Oh, 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 some wide stepping as the kick comes in from Lasky again. He kicks them a long way as he looks for Fox. Balance is there as well. Danger here for the Eags. Oh, Fox oh, well, went to ground. It's uh, some good pressure coming in over the top as they get the troops in now. But Fox still goes at it. Comes out the other side, but he will be pinched by the umpire. But he was thought the only bloke that was really interested in getting the footy. <laughs> and that's the harsh thing when you're the only bloke who actually wants to kill, and you're the one who's going to get. Uh, Obviously pinged against it, as we see, just an errant kick there going from Turner again, just going over the top. They're just missing their targets at the moment, making a little bit too much work for their direct teammate down the ground, Defab. Yeah, no, look, uh, as you said it before, how interesting would it be if you had Ricardo the Parada out there as well in the, in that forward line on a day like today where it's all a bit scrappy. Uh, they'll be missing him. Yeah, it's an interesting one, though, because this is a ground that centre-half forwards notoriously haven't played a big role because that quick entry out of the middle was going straight towards the goal square. But 
just can't get a system going at the moment, the Eagles. Full credit, though, to Imps, who have uh, matched them beautifully. Mark yeah. Taken, who's there by the box. Oh. I think the Eagles thought they got first touch on that, but he was third man in the chain. It just fell on his lap almost. He's the only one who actually went to go and grab it. So yeah. the other guys were virtually just putting themselves in a position, not realising what the other one was going to do around them. But Fox, very crafty forward, a great grab. And he's going to be setting up from 30 metres out directly in front and looking to put Imperials... In another little bit of a comfort zone lead, as we see Fox very relaxed coming in at the moment, uh, including the man on the mark, couldn't be any more relaxed if he tried, but he gets close to the man on the mark and absolutely oh, drops it straight through the middle. So just gives a little bit more breathing space there, Silco. 6 4 40. Imperials are leading. Rombo used to 4 3 27. 13 and a half gone, second term. Uh, down to you, Johnny Hollywood. Uh, they've got some options, haven't they? Inside that forward 50 balance comes into that mix. We know that McNally gets through there. We've seen what McDonald, Tip and Woody can provide, and we almost forgot about Foxy. Yeah, that's exactly right. Now, imagine Foxy getting defender number six. Okay, the sixth rate of defender going to Jaden Fox. And you've seen in the last two contests he did then. He was the only one that wanted the footy. So he almost got the first one. I thought he was, you know, he shouldn't have been penalised for that because he just tacked the ball and the others didn't. They all waited him to get it and tackled him. And then you've seen his intent in going for the ball third back. So he is dangerous. Yeah, good news for the Eggs. Isaiah Johnson back out onto the field. I'll need him through the second half as the free kick will go the way of Robin Bale Houston. Benji Neal, well way to kick over the top. Beautiful. Camera was in space. Uh, sorry, Zappier probably should have played on there, but decided to go back behind the mark. And his kick didn't quite hit the target, which gives Bryce Haas a chance here. Out of sight at half back. Ball hits the deck. Lane McHugh's in the vicinity as well. Or oh, maybe a, sling, a slinging tackle that's lingered a bit long there. Might go the way of the visitors, I reckon. Free kick will go to the Eagles. That's a fair way away from us here on that outer side as they uh, play on towards the right forward pocket looking there for big Ethan Gill. All coming in, I reckon, from Bullzomi. Not his best attempt, I don't reckon. They've just got to do a bit better than those last two yeah. inside 50s. Though. Neither of those are going to get the job done. Yeah, there, there was no real intent as to what they were going to do with either uh, entry inside the 50 there. Look, inadvertently, it's going to give them an opportunity inside their 50. It's how they set up behind the ball now as to whether they can keep it in. As we see the umpire throw it back. Two big Ruckman, Adkins and uh, Riley Burns go for it. Ball spills to ground where it's spent most of the day nights, Harry nights. Put his head over the footy as the ball spills out. And a nice little left foot for a wet out of that... Uh, uh, very uh, clustered little pack forming there right in that right uh, side pocket but beautiful little uh, turn of speed there coming out of there and just did so well coming out on the left foot just waiting for him to turn around so we can see <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Blue Pilata yeah, no, 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 yep. no, it was a quality finish he's such a well balanced guy he's got yeah. strong body presence but he covers the ground well he always looks well balanced doesn't make a lot of mistakes and, and he's got a really nice uh, technique on him as well so coming out there on the left foot as you said it was just that balance and composure that he had put all that weight onto the right foot and just snapped beautifully around his body so a very much needed goal there by Robin Bell Houston well, back underway here at Sarah Oval it's a seven point, point ball game in favour of the green machine one down by Riley Burns Whistle quickly there from umpire Buick on the play. He's going to give Imps the chance to load up. And, uh, wasn't much in it really, but uh, it's a pretty quick call from the umpire. And uh, Bryce Hart is looking to play on. He hadn't gone behind the line though. The classic umpire infringement as he now goes straight down the channel looking for options over the top of uh, the initial targets of Hickey. And now a quick kick around the body. Oh, third in line, he just gets around onto that right boot and he's just virtually come off and nearly kicked it half off Absolutely. the ground as well. And there's a case for high as well, a uh, bit of a, a grab of the jumper over the shoulder as well in that, so that's, uh, yeah, just held his feet and uh, knew what to do. And we were talking about the depth of the forward line before, well, he's now just resting as a forward, so another moment once, once you cycle through them, there's, uh, there's another one up there uh, just ready to kick a goal too. Yeah, Johnny, down to you, there's plenty to walk about Aaron Lasky uh, at both ends of the ground. Looks fantastic, doesn't he? He does all the right things, there's no doubt about that. And he's prepared to put his body on the line, that's more the point. So these blokes come to Queensland, we're told, well, Drew, it was so hot, it's not funny, and they've come in and got put this on for the day. It's probably not running around in long sleeves out there, but anyway, on we go. 7 4 46 imps, 5 3 33 for Robin Bale Houston, approaching 18 minutes gone. Second term on 106.7 <laughs> Hot FM, our season opener. Sunraysia footy netball league for 2024 as Imps again control the clearance. Little underground hand pass is pretty clever to find Brad Hards. Next man in the chain is Lane McHugh, centre wing, 11th Street side here at Sarah Oval. Just uh, too easy. no yeah. contest, yeah. is there? The Not marking up at all. Balance was certainly an option at centre half forward, but they go deeper and longer. They're looking for Prendergast. He almost brings it to ground. He's allowed to get up and play on pretty much from ground level. 
you just get the feeling the eggs are just a tad flat at the moment. Oh, and they're getting, so let's see if it, there's going to be a ball up here, 40 metres out directly in front of the Imps goal. Let's see what uh, Robin Vale do because they're getting sucked into the contest. They're getting caught out the back. And as you can see here, they've got numbers in very close. One, two, three, four players. Ball goes to ground. Numbers out the back there for Imperials. Quickly onto it is Benji Neal. Gives it off to a teammate who's got to do a bit of work below his knees in Zapia. Again, looking to get the ball moving forward. Uh, oh, Dion gee, Camera. Dion Camera. Thank you. So Camera, quick little handball off to Mezzatesta. He looks to go down the line Two again. Numbers there. Buntain drops what he should have taken running back Great in the ball. Hands. A beautiful one little handed pickup. He goes further down the line, but this time cut off nicely by James Zapia. He's trying to run and create something at the moment, but Tipper tries to influence his contest down on hands and knees, he taps it forward ball again, still at ground level Harry Knights, slaps it around the corner just trying to do anything to get the ball forward Benji Neal, looks like he might get a free kick there for over the shoulder no, it's going to go to balance, oh, I reckon, wow. is it? An umpire oh, no, he's being held out yet, so an interesting decision to be made is uh, the cockroach an opportunity here Brad Balance kicks it 50 metres on the fly, holds up a little bit into the breeze attacking the City Oval end here at Sarah it's up the grab zone inside the forward 50 out emerges the dangerous fox. He's so good on his feet. Finds Tip and Woody. Hand pass under pressure is not too bad. And uh, the Eagles will just lock in the pressure there defensively to hold them up. But uh, they look dangerous again, don't they, Mick? Yeah, the fox just backed himself uh, to fend off uh, Zach Leslie there. Gave him the old don't argue. And more to don't argue or two on a wet day, I reckon. As here's a chance for Corbo yeah, just to load one enough. up to get it out of danger. One out here for a big Ethan Gill. He can keep his feet, he's in the band here, but Imps get some more numbers around the footy. Good work from Douglas to hold him out of it. Buntane to Knights, now the shovel. Centre wing out of side, his kick is not too bad, but Corbo, the intercept king, gets there first, takes it and plays on, but this is where it's oh, falling over. They can't get a target here. Chance for Bulls, only one out with Colby Hards. Can he keep it alive? He takes it up to advantage. He's a big chance, but sits here. He's got the speed, Bulls, he picks it up. His left foot is a beauty! Is there a free oh, after the I think there is. I think he's actually missed it. Well, he's going to get a free for being pushed after the fact. He's all right at home, Bills. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you what, uh, as you said, just uh, Bullzomi with that little effect to be able to get the ball out in front and be able to run onto it. But you called it perfectly at the moment, Silco. They're getting stuck at centre-half forward and they're just bombing away to the same spot. They're doing the same thing, expecting uh, something to change. I'm not sure if it's going to at this stage of the day. Well, not today. A bit of run and carry is going to suit them better. And then the kick from yeah. centre forward into the hot spot. Over the top. Yeah, exactly right. Well, Paul Bulls only virtually allowed that to happen mm. by doing that, didn't he? Kicked oh. over the top to himself. So, Raph Bulls only, as uh, we think, has missed the first attempt. His second looks much straighter and they're happy with that. It's a goal and a bit of push and shove after the fact. So, the Eagles now at 6 3 39. Make no mistake, this match of the day is a dead set contest. Imperial 7, 4, 46. That, of course, is on the Kumiela Club scoreboard. The Royals who played 21 minutes in the second term. Well, as you said, uh, they're just doing enough to keep themselves in the game at the moment. Listening at home, you'd be thinking that Imps are absolutely dominating this game, which they are. But Robin Vale, this is the scary thing about Robin Vale. What have they been able to create in the second half by just holding off at this point? Have Imps given all their, uh, all their shots at the moment? I don't think they have. I think Imps are uh, looking very good. As we see, Neil perfectly taken out of the contest there. He goes forward inside 50, looking for Neil. Neil and, Neil and just has a little punch from behind taken from him. Douglas takes him outside 50. The Shot ball, the yeah, and that was really good again by Douglas, who's been quite influential today across half back. So he's going to uh, take it. The kick that is out in front of one of those big F 150s on the outer side for Davison Motors as it's <laughs> knocked out of uh, the grasp there of Imperials to give as a tester a chance. The size, the boys did well, and they'll kick inside here through Jim Zapier towards right half forward. Imps have got the numbers. Bounced off the chest initially, but the mark is going to be paid there to Simon Callahan and his uh, distribution. His first class riddles as he's a, continued to pass uh, He's a play. champion player, as we see Lasky do. One of the only few blemishes of the game. He looks uh, directly at Corvo. Corvo beats McNally to the ball to the ground. He gets it out wide to Zapia. Again, back to Corvo. Around the corner. He looks to go forward. Douglas and Coa back there. Callahan. He looks to move the ball forward. Finds Douglas again. He spins out of trouble. Gives an errant handball at the front there that uh, just causes a little bit of confusion amongst the Imperials players. But all the uh, players still going forward the Imperials way. As we see across half back, Robin Vale doing enough to clean up. Steal the ball going forward. Half forward again. It looks like that was young Mezzatesta. 
He goes further back there to Ford. Ford with a beautifully weighted kick inside, looking for Benji Neal. And over Dang. the top is Izzy Johnson. He runs onto it. He's got to get around a couple. He gets a forward handball off. And that's a beautiful snap around oh, the corner. Hit the there by Dean on camera. But that's the type of forward footy you want to get. Just kicking it over the top. Let him run into a little bit of space. And let those small forwards try and create something out of nothing. And down to you, Johnny. Uh, I know he's had a few uh, little injury niggles in the game so far. But I get the feeling that Isaiah Johnson's more the conduit at the moment and not the outlet but he's setting up some really nice passages at the moment. Yeah, look, he's, he's doing the right thing. I look, don't be surprised if he that lining it's up a centre-half forward because he's, they're breaking down there, and I don't know why. Gilt going back a fair bit into the deep end of the 50 rather than being at the true centre-half forward spot, and Isaiah's actually pushing up into there, but I think that's a great thing for them. Well, there is one there by him from the outer side at half-back flank as the long raking kick 11th Street side is going to uh, land nicely for Bryce Hards, who takes it unopposed. Just takes a bit of time off the clock and weighs up his options and then out of side, in no real hurry, he's going to get this sort of play on shortly, you'd reckon, as he kicks off a step, it's not his best attempt, he's under pressure, Hurley did well to make his way to the front of that concert, probably could have been paid that mark in the day yeah. today, the player says uh, no go, and then we're going to get a restart. That bizarre there by, uh, as you said, by Bryce Hart, held it up and then kicked off one foot towards the boundary. He almost kicked it out on the floor, <laughs> <laughs> certainly it wasn't his best option, you wouldn't have thought, as... Uh, locked in a, another dispute there on the outer side. The Eags just hack it along the Kumiana Club scoreboard side. Goes out of play. And I reckon we're going to get another ball in, are we? Was it? No, I don't know. There you go. Yeah, okay, yeah, so yeah, Lasky. Lasky plays on quickly. Kicks it to the hot spot for Fox. Out the back. Danger here. Well, it's it. It doesn't there for Bryce Hards. who loses his feet. Now a chance for Pilata. Looks a bit laconic there trying to get rid of it. Opens up a chance around the corner. Turner's got to go hard at it. Under the ground now is uh, Zach Galbraith. His first moments of the afternoon. It's quite capitalised. And we'll get a ball in next to the right hand behind post. So again, just kicking into space there. And it creates those uh, small crumbs to be able to run onto it. So at the moment, Robin Vale, just uh, very errant. They're not standing on any players. There's no one-on-one -on -one here. Imps go down to Tipper. Tipper out of nothing. He oh, goes forward. Not 15. Oh, definitely not 15. He tries to spin around. Goes into a wall of Robin Vale players right at the top of the square. But again, Robin Vale just very lazy there. They've got to be one-on-one. -on -one. They've got to be right beside the Imps players, or at least in front. And as you can see, one, two, three, four players behind the contest. Ball spills out. Benji Neal, he's trying to do something. Tipper with a big heavy hit. Coming up there is Robin Vale. And that is a beautiful kick again. Coming off the back of that contest. Swoops in on the ball. Absolutely unattended. And how you can leave Brad Hart's unattended at the contest is absolutely beyond me. But it cost them very dearly going into uh, the halftime break, Silco. I well, sure did. Uh, you mentioned the fact they're pretty much zoning off uh, there, not going one on one. I think they're going to have to readdress that strategy, Johnny Hollywood, at half time because it's not working for them at the moment. They get away with a lot, Paddy, due to the fact that they normally get the ball. They get the contested ball themselves, so then they break away and they run and they carry. But at the moment, they're not getting that contested ball, so the blokes are running off and carrying, even from defence, long before they get it. So they're, they're just not getting it in that contest. Yeah, and it was attention to detail. Too, the detail. That's right. It was that, that bump from McDonald, Tip and Woody that uh, led to that goal yep. there. So that forward pressure is really helpful on a day like today, too. All right, back into the middle here at Sarah Oval. Chancey for Pilata. That's Lou to get a, an extract for the Eags. Ball hits the deck there with... Dante Briganti, he's going to be gone, I reckon, up by Buick, line him up from 20 metres, and I've got you on 50. Blew the Acme Thunder, it's absolutely not him a treat, but that's all we've got for this, the second term, which runs just a tick over 26 minutes, as it did in the first. And I'll check that uh, Criminal Club scoreboard for you. It is Imperials 8-4-52, leading Robin Vale Houston at 6 4 40. It is your match of the day on 106.7 Hot FM. We are loving it, hope you are too. Back for our half-time rap show.
bingo is held Tuesday at 1.30 p.m. and again on Thursday at 7.30 p.m. Friday nights, there's 60 mad minutes with 45 draws with $2,000 in prizes. Tickets on sale, 6 p.m. and draws commence at 7 p.m. Every Saturday night is dance night in the lounge bar, 7.30 p.m. to 11.30 p.m. For more information, contact the Kumiala Memorial Sporting Club on 5027 4505. Sponsors, Hot FM. Community Bank Wentworth and District can help you decide the right solutions for your banking needs. They not only give you access to award-winning financial products and services, but are also committed to returning profits to our local communities. You can also bank securely online using e-banking or the Bendigo Bank app. Get in touch with the Community Bank Wentworth and District branch about your banking needs today. You'll find us at 3638 Darling Street, Wentworth, or call us to make an appointment. Community Bank, Wentworth and District, here to support you, making big things happen. Sponsors? Yeah, it is the Community Bank, Wentworth and District that are here to help you in 2024, and thanks for helping us out on Sunraysia Radio as well. This is uh, a hot FM call at half time, and Imperial's a great start to the season. 8 4 52. Robin Bow used to 6 4 40 on that Cumiela Club scoreboard. We're absolutely loving being back on the airwaves here with you. Mitch Rod, Ben Ridley, we'll have John Hollywood join us in just a second for our half time wrap. But for the man with all the numbers, let's go down to Max Diax, Hollingworth, and Maxi. Benji Neal for Robin Bow Houston's had a good start to the game so far. How many touches for him in the first half? Benji Neal's had 19 possessions in the first half. Yeah, he's certainly been everywhere so far. What about his Robin Bow Houston teammates that you're following so far? Charlie Forwards had three possessions that caused him to have... So he has six possessions for the game. Now. Maybe, maybe he hasn't been as prolific as what we were expecting in the first half, but played a bit more of a defensive role, I guess. Isaac Corver in that last quarter that was a bit more busier with six more possessions to have an eight eight total possessions. Yeah, he certainly has been taking it upon himself from half back to try and get that ball moving forward. What about uh, Isaiah Johnson so far? And Isaiah Johnson's had six this possessions line. too far so far with Two goals. Yeah, two goals as well. A couple of corkies, I think, to go with it for good measure as he's going. What about for the home side, the green machine, and your man, Anthony McDonald, Tip and Woody? How's his start been to the game? Um, Anthony McDonald and Woody said 11 possessions so far, but was a bit more quieter in that last quarter with only three possessions. What about the man below him, Aaron Lasky, in the number 21, has been outstanding so far? Yeah, Aaron Lasky's been great. We've set with 12 possessions, two marks, a tackle. And two goals. Yeah, a couple of really good goals in there as well. What about the uh, the evergreen Brad Hards? It just seems like he's getting better and better with age. Brad Hards had a great quarter last quarter, and had he had eight disposals to have 13 for the game, a mark and a goal. Yeah, certainly very influential. That last goal coming with 12 seconds left in the opening half. And what about his teammate and the coach Brad Valance? Brad Valance was quiet with three possessions in the last quarter to have six possessions for the game yeah, with not one a, mark. Certainly not a big day for the big forwards going ahead, but nice work from you, Max Diax Hollingworth, dominating with the numbers. Mitch Rod, then really a John Hollywood's come up from the mountain, get a bit of respite from the uh, drizzle that's happening down there, mate. And, and now you've got to deal with our drizzle up here. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd rather be down there, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. What have you made of that first half, Johnny? Obviously, he's got off to a great start. And while... Oh, yeah, certainly, as, as Benny said, it sounds like Imperial's probably been dominating the game, but still only a two-goal game on the scoreboard, and Robin Bell Houston had the better of that quarter on the scoreboard. The biggest thing was we know is Robin Bell Houston. They can kick goals at will, and that's the problem. And that's the, that's probably created their monster, I reckon, because in the first term, it was just intent. I think Imp's intent was just fantastic. Start a new season, all these recruits have come in and said, look, let's just go out there and do this, which was basically intent first, and then let's go to our power forwards. The Luke Higgins are up and about, the Fismic Nallies, all that sort of stuff. Brad Bounce was just out there commanding them where to go, where to lead, that sort of stuff. So their intent in that first quarter was unbelievable. Dippin' Woody kicks a couple around the corner, turns it on, that pick-up was, I thought he was just naturally going to kick it off the ground. Do you know the worst thing, mate? With that one, Johnny, I'm sitting there watching my two kids with reckless jumpers, Woody's down there, jumping around as if someone's won a flag because Tip has kicked a goal and I'm sitting there thinking, hang on, boys, come back, come come back team, to the fold here. This is not right. <laughs> yeah, look, it was fantastic watching. It's great stuff to see and that sort of stuff. Um, look, so Imps certainly for me in the first term did exactly what they need to do. They showed their intent. The supporters are wrapped. Other supporters sitting there watching are going, great stuff. They're going to improve. No doubt about that. Robinville on the other hand, on the other foot, says, to me, just so well 
I'm going to put it. They're just so good at what they do. They can do it so quick. Well drilled. Basically, not so much drill. Just they're so confident in their ability. Yeah, that's it doesn't it. matter what happens yep. on that scoreboard. They're going to win the game. Yep. That's their eye. But unfortunately, that comes contempt for me. And it's not because they're not. To me, they're going to be one of the best teams for by mile. But they they zone off way too quick yep. for me. They're not used to. Let's hold them first. Hold them. Hold them. Now we've got the ball. Now we go. They just naturally think their teammate is going to get the ball in that one-on-one -on -one contest. When it doesn't happen, they're caught out so badly, it's not funny. Um, they're, they're a sensational running side. They run and carry, no dramas at all. If they can just tighten up a little bit, find someone to hold that centre-half forward down, even if they don't mark it, grab it, all they've got to do is command it into that region, so it goes into that centre bit there. That's the only thing they're lacking. Besides that, Robin Bale got nothing to lose there. They're right on top of this game as well. Well, that's why he's the master coach, Rudinsky. He's just absolutely analysed it perfectly. Oh, look, he really has. And, and when you look at it, as you said, it's the word confidence you can look at with Robin Bale. So Robin Bale, and you saw it at virtually every pack, Robin Bale were going in at numbers. So they, they, they were trying to get that first uh, first hit at the, at the fall of the ground. The problem with that, though, is, is you're leaving players behind. Now, Imps had uh, nominated maybe one or two players to go in there. Bryce Hards, uh, uh, Colby Hards, Brad Hards. Once they got a player out behind them, especially the likes of Douglas, uh, we saw especially across half back, back Callahan yeah. and these guys, and that last goal was set up that way when they laid off at the contest at the top of the square on the uh, defensive side here, which exactly. allowed Hards to be able Hards. to come around the back, get a nice little jump from Tipper, and he kicks a goal. And as you said, Robin Bale aren't that far away. They just no, need no, to no. start playing a little bit better one-on-one -on -one footy around the contest because they're starting to spread the ground a little bit better. At half forward, what they're doing at the moment is they're pushing so many players up now, so they're doing the opposite of what they were doing in the first quarter, that all of a sudden they've got no one there That's exactly at right. half forward and they're leaving Paul Big Gilly by himself to yeah. take on one or two or three con yeah. uh, players at the same time. So... It's just a small couple of little structural matchups that they just need to change. 8 4 52 for Imperial, 6 4 40 for Robin Bale Houston. Let's have a look at the home side first, boys, and some of the better players from the first half. And I'll go first with a nomination. First, 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 first. Oh, I just had a little brain fart while we were going there as well. <laughs> but um, someone who has been a favourite of ours here on Hot FM for a number of years, and he wears the number seven, Alex Douglas, I reckon he's yeah. been outstanding. And a plug and play kind of player, isn't he, oh, uh, yeah. Riddles? Because he can go in literally any position on the ground and maybe apart from the ruck. Yep. And he's sort of made himself at home across half-back so far. And you know the funny thing is, he never panics with the ball in the end. So Dugo is one of those types of players that makes the right decision nine times out of ten. Is just it, because he's is just... He, is he a casual kid? Is he a casual kid? Oh, I don't really know him personally. Not, not we've, not we've got Nick Hickey. Let's ask him. Is Dugo a casual man by nature? Nick, is he... Dugo? Yeah, he, just, he, plays, he plays that way. He's very composed. Very cool, very calm, as yeah. you said. He never tends to... If he's going he's to give it up, he's going to give it up in the context. Yep. He's going to hold it in. OK, have the ball up. Yeah, he's not going to hand it over. No. He just isn't. No, and as you said, he's a plug player where you can put him wherever you need him to be and you can bet that he's actually going to have an impact where he's going to go. Good is, we call him a plug player. How good a player actually is he? Is yes. And when you start pushing him out to half back flanks, half forward flanks and everywhere else, how yeah. good a player does he become? Well, and that's it. And, and look, even when we were speaking earlier and you were talking about uh, the types of players that Ince have now yeah. got, that all of a sudden you go, forward, you've got Fox, who's taking the fifth or sixth defender. And, I mean, now all of a sudden, Ince have got these players that they're putting on the peripheries that are not uh, players that have played those positions before. They've had to play key position roles, and now they get the luxury to be able to go out and get a bit of breathing space. A bit of extra freedom going around. Um, I think six so far for the Queensland recruits, Lasky and Buntane. Lasky especially. Oh, fantastic. Been, been brilliant. Yeah, they came with big wraps, but you can see Lasky, that goal that he kicked in the first quarter was absolutely amazing. But did you see Buntane's pick up for the big oh, one hand as well coming in half yep. back? Imagine on a try day. Yeah. The man's 6 4, 6 5, runs like that, can do that. He's going to be special as well. Yeah, they look, and that's the biggest thing. I mean, all the recruits that have come in today, um, and I wrote about it today, that the recruits that are coming in, these, these are high-class recruits that are coming through. So it's exciting exactly to see. what you wrote today in that paper. We're not just talking about a bloke that was just fifth, sixth, seventh best player of the club no. in Noosa. We're talking about best and fairest winners. Yep. We're talking about vice captains in their state team. We're talking about blokes that have won four or five best and fairest yep. captains of their clubs. These are these, stars. These are stars. And these are stars in a very strong competition. And, and you look at it, and, and how good is it? Because it lifts the standard of everyone else around them. And uh, it's we love it. Oh, it's been a fantastic game to sit there, as you said. It's a wet weather day, uh, but we've still had plenty of highlights that have come through here, Mitchie. And uh, as you said, I think Lasky at, at this stage, as good as Benji Neal's been, uh, I think Lasky for me, I, I'm with you. For the home team, he's been the pick of the players. I think he has been so far as well. Got to obviously give a big tick to the skipper, Brad Hards, who's just, yeah. he's made for a day like today, isn't he? I think 
think every superlative we've used for him over the years, you can bring back up again. What about for the visitors? Neil is probably, I think, probably far away their best player, I think, so far. But we've seen some good um, impact plays, I think, from the likes of young Raffles, Omi and Dion Camera, I reckon, at times yeah. in the first half. And young Zapier. Yeah, Zapier yeah, as well. Exactly. So I think they're going to be the kids, potentially, who could break this game open if you want that run and carry going. They've got to get the ball in the right spots, though, Johnny. Yeah, and, and, right. and what's happening is, is they're playing as link-up players that are getting pushed off the contest. So now that Rathbull's only, I think, has been the pick of them, even though Zappi has had more of the ball, uh, the impact has been from Bulzomi. Bulzomi's been able to get the ball in twice inside 50. He's been able to get on the end of a couple as well. And that's where you want to start to see the likes of these, especially these smaller build guys. Uh, Zapier, Bulzomi, uh, Buganti and these types really starting to hurt and camera inside the 50. So that's where you want them doing their damage. Um, at the moment, leave it to probably those bigger boys, the Benji Neal, the Pilatas and these guys to go up and make the impact around the contest. Yeah, exactly. Very, I'm, I'm, I'm wrapped with Charlie Ford. Made a couple of mistakes there, you blokes called it, that sort of stuff, but he's definitely got it. There's no doubt about that. You can see just by the way he goes at the ball, where he put positions himself, how he does it, how he looks up, all that sort of stuff. He's going to be a very, very good player. Yeah, for like Coming in on a wet weather day is never going to be ideal for your first run out, is it? So it's, <laughs> well, think about our pre-season. We've just gone through our pre-season. These folks have been training since. Most full That's time. exactly right. Even a week and a half ago, I went and watched one of the yeah. training runs. It was 36 degrees. Blokes out there weren't sure what boots to wear, weren't sure of anything. Half these blokes wouldn't have other stops, would they? Well, the other thing too, and, and you say it in regards to the pre-season, you can see that the, the, the game plan, especially for Robin Bale, has been what that with handball, yep. move it forward. And that's what they're relying on. And unfortunately, she's a bit soapy today. She's slippery. So it's a bit hard to play that brand of footy. That's our halftime wrap here on 106.7 Hot FM. We'll go back to the studio and we'll take a couple of quick messages and be back with the second half of action here on 106.7 Hot FM, your home of live sport in Sunrise. For a great night out with family or friends, there is always great entertainment on offer at the Kumiello Memorial Sporting Club. Bingo is held Tuesday at 1.30pm and again on Thursday at 7.30pm. Friday nights, there's 60 mad minutes with 45 draws with $2,000 in prizes. Tickets on sale, 6 p.m. and doors commence at 7 p.m. Every Saturday night is dance night in the lounge bar, 7.30 p.m. to 11.30 p.m. For more information, contact the Kumiala Memorial Sporting Club on 5027 4505. Sponsors, Auto Fair. You'll love barbecue. So much. Hi. <laughs> but spare a thought for the lonely sod stuff behind the grill while everyone else is having fun. Like, Daniel here. No, I mean, what? No, I'm not saying. I'm from the radio station. I'm here to help you download the community radio boss app. Pass me phone. Sure. Cool. Well, with the app, you can now listen to us anywhere and even message the studio. So you always have company. Thanks. Oh, sausage. Oh. Yeah, that will be nice. Oh. Download the community radio boss app. Do yourself. Looking for someone to recondition your engine, repair your tail shaft, or even machine your flywheel? Mildura Automotive Engineering is the business for you. They make brake hoses, brake lines, air conditioning hoses, power steering, and hydraulic hoses too. And also sell a wide range of engine parts, clutches, uni joints, and engine gaskets. Plus, new install easy up and slow down struts for late four wheel drive tailgates. Mildura Automotive Engineering, next to the waterside corner of 7th Street and Orange Avenue, Mildura. 5023 0238. Hot sponsors. With thanks to Community Bank Wentworth and District, Hot FM is live local football. It is live and local here on 106.7 Hot FM. We are loving being back on the airwaves so far today. It is half time of your season opener here in the SFNL. Imperials, the home side, 8 4 52. Lenny Robinvale, Houston by two goals, 6 4 40. That's on the Kumi Other Club scoreboard. Imps already out there warming up, ready to go for the second half. The Eagles skip a break and turn and now leads his troops onto the ground. Mitch Rod, Pat Silcox, and Ben Ridley, the call team up here in the box. John Hollywood will come to you down on the boundary as well. Boys, uh, are, are an interesting first half so far, and of course that wet weather footage just added a little bit of extra chaos. Paddy, what did you make of it, and what do you think will happen in the next 40 minutes or something? Oh, I think the green machine, Mitchie, were a bit of a surprise packet, weren't they, Riddles? I, I expected that they'd improve, but uh, they've played at a standard that's uh, 
going to be tough to beat, I reckon, across the season. So the key for them now is can they maintain after the long break? I mean, that's always yeah. tough, isn't it? If you get a good start, the momentum's going your way on a wet day. You go and sit down in the cold shed for a bit. It's always hard to get reignited again, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And uh, as you said, no, it's fantastic to see. I mean, uh, IMS were, were really structured. They were really disciplined and they were really consistent in the way that they were moving the ball. Even when there was a bit of adversity came and Rob Vale kept on coming at them and uh, really didn't let up, they still found a way to be able to settle themselves and actually uh, get to the next step again. So uh, it's fantastic to see, and I think it's going to be a, a spectacular second half, Silco. Yeah, I think you might have mentioned in the second term, Riddles, that the fact that you know, Imps have been the dominant team for two quarters, but yet Robin Vale only two goals behind them. Yeah. They're just hanging tough, aren't yeah. they? And that's the scary part, because you look at it, and Robin Vale has certainly been far from what we've seen as their best footy, and yet, as you said, they're only two goals away, so then you start looking at Imps and you go, OK, there's a few older bodies out there. Does it get uh, impacted when you down the sheds for 20 minutes? Does the body get a little bit colder and seize up? Um, and uh, for the sake of the spectacle, I really hope that it doesn't because it's been a fascinating game just to watch the chess pieces move around even in that second quarter. You could actually see what was happening uh, behind the scenes with the coaches either side. Um, so tactically, it's actually been quite an intriguing game as well, which I've liked. Certainly the chess piece is being moved around a fair bit by both coaches at the moment. Brad Balance, of course, being the on-field coach as well. So he's got a pretty good team behind him down there on the Imperial yeah. bench at the moment, Ben. Yeah, look, he really does. And look, Imps have got a lot of, uh, probably of what we call the old-school type people that have come back into the club. And I think that's been a really big thing over the pre-season. So obviously the likes of Tipper and the recruits and those types of things on field are fantastic. But what's happening uh, behind the scenes off the field has been really uh, important as well. The likes of Dale Stafford, who you spoke to earlier, uh, you can see down the bottom there, where you've got the likes of uh, Jared Roberts, who's also uh, come back. He's a, he's a, you know, a triple premiership captain. Uh, you've got Russell Knights, Paul Hogarth, these guys down on the bench. I mean, these are these are superstars of the football club. So you can start to see what's happening off the ground there with the Imperials, and it's exciting to see. Um, so hopefully that starts to lead to that on-field success again. Yeah, it takes the pressure off of Brad a bit too, yeah, doesn't it? Because does. he can just focus on playing the game, yeah, that's knowing right. that he's got a great team on the bench yeah. to run the show for yep. him. Of course, he can put his hand up and bark some instructions when it's needed to be done, but he'd have to be pretty happy with what he's seen so far. Yeah, right? and that's exactly right. So, and you can just start to see, as you said, there's a real nice balance out there, and you don't need to rely on Brad Hards and these types of uh, players today. So, again, it's just making sure that these players keep fit and healthy throughout the season, because, uh, again, they still play a vital role in this. So, uh, hopefully, uh, for the supporters of the Imperials' uh, sake, that these older uh, stalwarts can actually keep the bodies fit and healthy for the season. Umpire Benny Frost in the middle holds the ball aloft. Of course, your umpire of the year from 2023. And the second half of your SFNL match of the day underway. And Dylan Atkins with the big fist first off, but gathered by Laskew, who's been outstanding so far for the green machine. Towards centre half forward, McGalley had it spoiled away by Taylor. Taylor at ground level again following up, and Leslie there as well. Quick shuffle of the handball out from Balance. And he's taken down. They're going to be a stalemate again about... 55 from home here for Imperials. You can see where McDonald Tip and Woody is. He's got Braden Turner for company again. He's been at his side all day so far. Lasky hooks around the corner. It's intercepted by Isaac Corbett. You call him the intercept King Paddy, and I reckon that's pretty accurate. Probably an unintentional one, almost a falcon for him that time, but he managed to hang on to it at the second bite of the chair. works. So he goes down towards centre wing on the outer side, but inch leading in the race once again. Front and centre on a wet day, and that's uh, another new boy, Roly Buntain. Takes that mark and plays on. Kicks inside the forward 50. McNally got up and over the top looking dangerous. Ball out the back with Zach Leslie. Nice win from Fox. Gets away from the Woodley tackler. His kick is high looking for balance. Going back with the flight. It's going to go out of bounds on the full. And we'll get a reload in that uh, right forward pocket as we see it. Mitchie San Medio in of Sarah, Sarah Over. Yeah, John Hollywood down on the boundary. We'll come to you, mate. It looks like that rain and the wind might have eased off a little bit down there at ground level. Well, the, the rain's a little bit... Yeah, spasmodic, there's no doubt about that, but that wind wasn't much, was it really, really wasn't it? I know from up there it would have looked like a three or four goal threes, but I was just talking to some of the Robin Bowl Brain Trust, and they said, we don't know why they're kicking goals at that end, so conditions are still as they were, boys. Really good sliding yeah, mark there by Justin Nayland. He goes quickly with the handball over the top, a chance here for Dion Cameron. Got it from younger brother, Matty. Up and under, Gill. It's the target. Oh, oh, I think it's Buntain again. He's taken a mock and you intercept King coming into the comp this year. Oh, Under pressure with wet wheels, that's a really good grab. Yeah, look, he's very, very uh, dry in the hands, isn't he, Buntain? So that's two really key marks there. He's stopped uh, a surge going forward, and that one obviously deep in the back line. He's got a uh, good read on the footy. He's been he knows where to be. Oh, he's got a lot of the time. Certainly that we've seen so far this afternoon. Mark taken by Jared McNally here. 
Left half back right in front of us here in the Hot FM box. Goes towards centre wing looking for Hickey. Got hands in the back. The info is OK. He takes the mark. Second by the Cherry Luke. Hickey plays on. Wheels round under his right. Good penetration up towards the forward 50. Almost Dart Hurley with the mark. Comes oh, yeah. with the footing. Was taken high by Gordo. Sees up by Matthew Buick. I just flicked him on the man but on the way through. But <laughs> um, I said it was a free kick. I was going to say, Corvo, I reckon just about got him on the top knot, pulling him around. Dart Hurley, who I believe is the best Ferris winner for the club last year, certainly in a trying season for the Green and Whites. As a guy who showed up each and every week. You know what, boys, if you've got a hairdo like that, people like me, you deserve to get that ball. <laughs> <laughs> now, I sense some jealousy coming out of their riddles. As Hurley, who probably about on the paint by the time he kicks it, Maybe just inside, 45 degree angle. Let's get a good start for the home side in the second half. Comes in, I reckon he slipped, slipped a bit as he went to kick it. And it's going to be bundled across the line there by Leslie. And a minor score there for Imperials. The first score of the second half is a behind 8 5 53. Robin Bell Houston, 6 4 40. Well, back into play quickly. The Eagles will try and set something up. Front and centre there was Douglas. Couldn't quite get it. Then Fred Gaz kicks it up towards centre half forward. Up and out of here, Fred Gaz. Ball hits the deck though, Atkins read it best, pushes away a couple of inch defenders, gets it over there towards Jim Zappier. Got a chance here with Ethan Gill out wide at the centre wing, 11th Street side, but uh, the big fella hasn't quite had the handling going today, and then he's uh, rounded up in a three-man tackle. Empire says it's held to him, maybe dodged the ball there, Big Gill. It's like a couple of hyenas trying to take down our giraffe <laughs> <laughs> out there in the savannas, it took three of them to get him down. <laughs> Looks like a bear, doesn't he, Big Gill, with a beard, which he's uh, sported. Since his return many, many seasons ago, we mentioned earlier in the call with Mitchie that he's been such a good servant for the Eagles over a long period of time. Free kick, though, in that ruck contest, going to go the way of Imperials. Play on through Riley Burns. His left foot is uh, pretty high up and under inside the forward 50. McNally, two three bites, he's going to be paid. He's going to ground, as you mentioned, but he's uh, lost his feet, but kept his eyes on the footy most importantly. Oh, fantastic. But again, uh, first of all, hard to get a high uh, high uh, free kick against you when you're trying to go up against Riley Burns. But again, it was just opening it up. He's trying to kick over the top of that contest and letting those guys go back towards goal. Read perfectly there by Big Fizzle and his uh, three grabs, but uh, eventually took it down. Yeah, a bit unlucky for Jack Taylor. He just slipped at the wrong moment, didn't he, going across. It just allowed McNally to get the right position. Looking for his first of the season. That's dead eye straight. And we're done there for the home side. 9 5 59. 19 point lead over the grand finalist, Robin Bale Houston, 6 4 40 on that Cumulo Club scoreboard. John Hollywood down there on the boundary line. Great to see Fizz McNally up and moving, and looks like he's moving well at the moment. He's moving beautifully, there's no doubt about that. His fitness level looks fantastic. He's looks in great nick and he's, he's doing all right things. You can always tell when Fizz is up and about. He tacks that ball hard and he's doing that today. We were talking about Buntane before, boys. Now, obviously down back he's doing great. Imagine if, if you know, he does get a Mazzini back and obviously Galbraith coming back as well. That's, That's a three good blokes down there that can intercept Mark. Yeah, they're all starting to line up nicely, aren't they, for the Green Machine? Just had the answers so far this afternoon in our match of the day. Oh, 6.7 Hot FM. They'll go ahead here again through Bryce Hards. It's up towards the left half forward looking for McDonald Tip and Woody. Try to hack it out of midair. Out of the airy. Ball uh, now comes back in board here. Is Lasky breaks a tackle. Hand passes a ripper to McNally. Maybe two in a minute for the fizzle. He's going to stick it out wide to the right, though. Nice the result. So 9 6 60 for Imperial. 6 4 40 for Robin Vale Houston. And that boys is at the six minute mark for two. Holding now a 20 point lead Imperials. Waiting on Robin Bale Houston to provide some answers to the questions being probed at them so far. Turn up. Dabs that towards the defensive 50 in Corvo. Not a lot going on. They have to go with the quick hands to get it open. Now a chance here for Foster down the line. Good mark coming in the front by the Mesa Tester. Had to reach over his head and under some pressure from old fish guts going here coming at him. Again, not a lot of movement. He's got to stop and pop. Clever little kick. It's going to work okay for Ianko. Johnson's deepest. He's going to go in that direction. Nayland's also there as the tall man. Didn't quite get the penetration he wanted. Maybe take it off the ball. There was camera. Nothing doing. We came off from it. Now he's good though with Douglas. Try and clean it up in the defensive 50. Down the line. Might work okay here for Ox. Pushed out of the way nicely there by guys like Corvo. Still going wide though. The Eagles getting stretched to the extremities here at Sarah. Corvo looking to try and centre things up. His little bullet pass is good. Oh, it's up just there with Rath Bulzomi. He's been pretty dangerous this afternoon with two majors. His left 
good flight is not so great. Him get the numbers back behind it once again. And great catch going back to the flight. Aaron Lasky, he has been impressive. He's kicked out to Bryce Hards. He spills what he could have taken. Pulls up for grabs here with James Zapier. Couldn't quite stay on his feet. And Imps get the takeaway now. Brad Hart sweeps a 30-metre hand pass out wide to Dart Hurley. Centre wing, 11th Street side of Sarah Oval. Out toward McDonald. Tip and Woody hits it on the slide. Tries to get to his feet. Good pressure from Braden Turner. But Tipper gets it on there towards Luke Hur uh, Hickey. I had Hurley, Hickey and everybody else involved there. But the big fella just uh, had the concrete boots on and couldn't keep his feet. <laughs> you sound a bit like a Swedish ship there. Hurley, Hickey, Hurley, Hickey. <laughs> Going around on the far side of the ground. Maybe I had a stroke there. Right there. <laughs> As it's tossed it inside. Big thump forward there by Burns. Gains about 25 minutes of territory. Staying inside too. This could be dangerous for the Eagles defenders. He's got to do well here. He did nicely there. Mo Pilata dances his way out of trouble. Looking for Gill down the line. Front position there was taken by Colby Hards. Couldn't hold it. Again, the tackling pressure from Imperial has just been intense so far. And I reckon they might get a free kick here as well. In fact, it's going the way of the Eagles in that one for holding the ball. And at the back of the pack, I think it might be Ienko who's over the back. Just sits it high up and under. Not a great looking kick, but it's going to work out okay. Lands in the lap of, I believe, that might be Ford coming at him. True centre wing, taps it over the top. Now they get another chance here. The Eagles right in front of that Kumiela Club scoreboard. Kick over the top is well weighted. The ball's only. Couldn't get both hands to it. In fact, it's out of bounds on the full over the other side. It's untidy riddle. So, again, they continue to follow the boundary line, and it's making it so hard for them at the moment. And you called it earlier, Silco. It's because they're flat-footed. So, therefore, there's nothing moving over the back for them. They've got to look for that short option to present itself. But they've got to get that ball moving quickly. They've got to be able to take it on and actually try and get around the opposition player on the mark. Start getting over the top of that contest. Yep. They're just dropping short every time. And as you said, it's because they choose to go wide. Free kick uh, in the contest out of side centre wing to Brad Valance who was just escorted out of the contest. Goes on around the mound on the mark, Bradley. Little floating inside out talk. It's going to be hard for forwards to mark. Defenders as well. Leslie uh, was running shotgun for the hand pass there, but overran it there. Music. Noah Foster, ball on the deck. Brayden Turner trying to pick it up at his boot places. No chance for him as they try and get some numbers around that forward 50 metre arc. Good hand pass out of trouble, but a hit is a ripper there from Imps to really put him under pressure. And there's a test to somehow gets them out of there. We'll kick around the body up towards centre wing. And a marking toe that I'm not certain that Matt Cameron is the option they want to go to out there, but he might be involved in this passage now as they get some run and gun. Go Nailing the back. In the, uh, might be the next man in the chain for Guild as he floats one up again along the boundary line, but not much to go to. Look at the legs from Cameron. He's got some wheels. Good tackle, bit of pressure. Oh, no. oh, 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 tackle and will be he was 20 metres away from the contest and got the free. Handballs to Neil, just pops it into the pocket. Really well done. He was being run down as he was going for the shot at goal and just redirected his kick at the last second riddles. Now, Joey Mesa test a free in the forward pocket, but Matty Camera take a bow. Yeah. That was outstanding. This is what we're speaking about. Kick it over the back. Let these little guys, the guys that have got that pace going into the forward 50, let them go and do all their work inside there. They'll put that pressure on. They'll create the opportunities. As he goes around, tries to snap it, and I think he has dropped it, has he? But there's not much celebration going on there. Zone, his yeah, but again, you've just got to create the opportunity. You've got to get these small guys, these are skinny, fast-moving forwards. Get them dangerous up for them. Don't get them dangerous in the middle of the ground because they're only taking a possession from someone else. And that was perfect. Good finish in the end from Joey Mezzatesta as well. I just said, look, subdued in the celebrations, I think, coming yeah. around. But it's through the big sticks and the margin back to 14 points from Val Houston, 7446, trailing Imperials, 9660. Yeah, to you, Johnny. If you get a chance, uh, yell out to Dave out and tell him to go down the corridor with you. They're making life so hard for themselves. Well, I'd just kick Gil at centre forward and tell him not to move more than three feet and tell him to put on his head and we'll yep. just go after it from there. It could be much worse, I reckon. Oh! It's going forward. Atkins almost taken holding the ball. Spills out now to McHugh for Imperials. Towards the Ford 50. Fox, one Duke. That's a good handball coming over the top there from Balance, who's moving well so far. Handball back from Hogarth, back to McHugh. He jumps it into the Ford pocket. He's trying to find Fox on the lead, but Corvo takes the oh. intercept grab. Gia, one step kick across defensive 50. Wow. is dangerous. Oh. Anthem has a test of oh. right by Bryce Hart. Under real heat here, the hip. The um, one by Houston defense, they are under extreme pressure. But Don Tipper Woody in the end gets caught for holding the man. It's pretty cleverly done. Oh, Zach Lissy, but gee, they made hard work with that. I mean, on a dry day, potentially, Benny, oh, that kick would work, but on a wet day, yeah. Gee whiz, I tell you, I'm still a braver man than I would have been. Oh, oh. <laughs> Speaking of brave, what a mark this by Colton Hards going back with the flight.
did not deviate from the footy for a second. Handball's back to Knights, who just sticks it high and long down the way. Corvo couldn't take it. He's going to get a free throw over the shoulder, and they can reset the goal again. A bit of a concern here is that uh, Hards is slipping off the ground. Good story, he came down in that yeah, marking so contest. have a quick look at him as he takes a break there, Colby. The uh, free kick is it going down the field. Afterwards, because uh, again they missed the target, Benny, and almost got their pants pulled out <laughs> one more time. So they continue to hem themselves and on the boundary line and right beneath us here in the hot box. With Luke Pilata, defensive side of centre wing, opens her up off the left shoe. Ince has got the numbers back in the hole though, it's just too easy. Read it to perfection. Hard taken there by Luke Hickey. Put himself behind the flight. This kick is pretty good. And it's spilled by Laskin, probably one of the only mistakes he's made all day. Goes back to try and Make up for his error and uh, gets it out the front door looking for Knights. Back to Lasky, take it up by Meza Tester at a heavy tackle. Playing with Callahan. Good handle with Bridget, opens it up for McHugh. And away go Inch now to Hogarth outside centre wing. He's got it towards right half forward at the moment. About 75 from home. Goes long down the line. Again, not a lot to kick to. Both teams with extra players in defence right now. Corvo shoveling handball. Oh, oh, his teammate and kill. He's caught dead. Holding the ball. No, nice way by McDonald. Tip of Woody. Shrugs the tackle. The quick kick is going to the near side. Just a minus score again. He's threatening Tipper. He's threatening to put it through the big sticks. 9 7 61. Rocky Bale Houston, 7 4 46 on the Cumiela Club score. You feel the crowd lift and roar yeah, every time he gets in the Yeah, Brent, it's exciting watching the kids down there. The Riddles boys uh, doing backflips. Yeah, they're, they're, they're more excited than any of them, which is a shame. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Braden Turner gets us back underway. Favours that outer side half back flank looking there for Mo Koala. Here's that initial contest. All at ground level might be Camera as nice he gets work. it up there to Poala. It looks like he might have taken high. Certainly played for the free kick. Camera again sweeps out the hand pass. Here comes Lou Pilata. Just outside of uh, the range there is Dylan Atkins went in to try and find it. Now Nayland. It's in a high sling, try sling, over the sling top. Sling tackle, I reckon. Yes, he not a lot in it again, but Matt's really good. Good. Seems to be hot on the collar. Yes, Johnny. Yeah, yeah Colby out hard to die regards to the up that injury. Come off with a sprained ankle. Not wearing tape at the moment. Got his boot off now, getting some tape on. So hopefully he'll come back on shortly. You good, baby? Uh, hopefully good news there for Colby Hards. As you know, the best thing about that boy, you know he hasn't shaved his ankles this morning, so <laughs> <laughs> it's going to hurt for him after the game. Absolutely. Will Douglas is kicking to the centre of the ground, was dropped. Again, the ball just pinballing around in that wet conditions at the moment. Mesa tested with the handball forward. Nice pick up by Atkins for the big man. Went with the right foot, Bunana, down the ground. Interesting choice, but it works okay. Matty Cameron's had some good touches in this quarter. That handball not finding its intended target. Now Callahan just belting it forward for Imps. Hogarth at the back of the pack. Gill's also there. It's going to bobble into the hands of Corvo. He just belts it every opportunity. Both teams going along without even looking. O'Donnell belts it forward for Imperials now, and it's going to go straight down the lap of Jack Taylor. Takes the intercept grab. I reckon if you're a half back at the moment, you're licking your lips because the ball's coming your way. Yeah, he was looking uh, to come our side and switch it, but had no real option, so they'll stay 11th Street side. Pick up to a contest. Chance here for, is it Big Atkins? Did well. Handles it nicely, comes in board here for Mesut Testa. He's kicked smothered again. Just lacked a little bit of creativity there across half forward. And to try and rally the numbers through Regan Scott. Ball's hit the deck, just uh, away there from the Kumiella Club scoreboard. We'll give you an update on that shortly as the ball's kicked around the corner. Hinks almost with the takeaway there. Comes in board nicely here for Brad Hardy. Lines up a battle. Oh, Goes about oh, 70 to an open goal. Hey, it's a hell of a bounce. It skids across the window. Nick Gilly will get there. Make it safe. Wow. Well, 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 what a hit that was from Bradley Hards. Kimmy Ella Club, the scoreboard reads, gentlemen, 9862 imps, and it's a 7846 for 7446 for Robin Bale, 16 goal. Tell you what, if that had skated through, Brad Hards would have been first past the finishing post over the other side of the basic cup track because he would have celebrated like no man. And in the end, it threw for a minus four. We're actually just uh, <laughs> <laughs> the kick inside from Corvo. Well picked up by Kelly. Well picked up by Dion Cameron. Takes a bounce. It works in the end. Handball to Ian Copas. Ripped out of his hands by Buntain. Umpire says, no, umpire viewing did see it. Young Jack Galloway's going to take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That bounce. And he's just interesting choice. It's obviously natural instincts, but on a game like today, you can't just throw it over natural instincts. There was a couple of small forwards there. All he had to do was actually chip it over the top and let them run onto it. He, he didn't even need to get the move too far. Going forward, Rick is going to go away. Burns, who's had a pretty good duel in the ruck with 
Atkins today. Little kick inside's okay. Works for Brad Hart's kicking. Belts it inside forward 50. Fizz McNally's got a good run at this. Off his hands. Galbraith, a nice pick up. Went with the fresh airy though with the kick. Handball to turn is going to work okay. But again, slipping through the hands of Ethan Gill. He's had a rough day today, the big fella. Down at ground level, McDonald tipping Woody. Paddles it towards Fox. He has been good. Kick by work on Handball's on here for Johnson. Tries to honour it. Doesn't work to his advantage. Interesting looking. Look at my handball in the end. Heroes again just got the right position at the right time. I sure have. Bunn's hand. Down by Neil though. He's kick under pressure. Only finds out. There we go. Hand pass out here for Joey Mezzatesta. Mezzatesta squares it up central looking for an option. His kick is measured beautifully. Mark not taken though by camera oh, oh, hang on to that one i reckon this will keep a keen eye on last year's uh, medalist oh, there benji nearly might have done the wrist there we'll keep an eye johnny you uh, get all over that for us is now corbo tries to set them up again with a one two big isaac 55 out goes down the tube running back to front johnson not clear to say there by bunting i reckon it is and we have a minor score for the eagles seven five forty seven Jimmy Allen Club scoreboard in some 9862 Mitchell at the 18 minute mark. Yeah, John Hollywood looks like uh might have shaken it off down there. Looks like a bit more of a stinger or maybe falling on the elbow more than anything. Yeah, you'd hope so, wouldn't you? There's no doubt about that. He spoke to the trainer, the trainer, and he pushed him off, so he seems to be alright. So hopefully he's good. Nice. Had a few touches in the last few minutes. Kick up top to Dart Hurley. Comes Neil again, ready for a tackle. Kick by Drew and skated through it. Might work out okay, the chaos ball. Gee, McNally kept his feet well there against Leslie. But Donald Tip and Woody. And the skipper for Robinville is standing tall in defence at the moment under real heat. Yeah. Consider the start that Tip and Woody had, though. I reckon the Turner really has stuck to that club beautiful bit. Yeah, it's a really good matchup for him. So uh, uh, he's been fantastic. As we see, Benji Neal tried to climb on the back of uh, Bradley Hart here. Absolutely dropped the soda there at half back. Might be crucial. As here's Prendergast who floats one up towards the 50 metre arc. Going back to the flight there is Lasky. He gets a second bite of the cherry. He's still going, Aaron. Ball at ground level. Man free at the back. You go back and try and find it. Here's Hogarth. Shoots out the hand pass. They keep it alive here. It's Dart Hurley inside out off the right, and it's going to miss everything, would you believe? Well, I hope it was the hair getting in his eyes there, because he was straight in front. <laughs> Brad Hart, sorry, Brad Ballas, I beg your pardon, was the man. They were trying to get it to him with every possible opportunity. Clever handball actually there for Hurley, who just got barreled over as he's kicked it. Even, even tip it there, so just in that contest, he was smart enough just to give it a little tap out forward, and that just cleared the ball out of congestion there. John Hollywood down on the boundary, and Craig Davison might have just taken a couple of big breaths at the back of the box there. Oh, oh, has got his third of the day. How good was that out of the pack? He is on fire so far. Third goal. What a start to his career in Sun Asia. Now 10 8 68 for Imperials, 7 5 47 for Robin Bale Houston, and Johnny Hollywood. Uh, Talk about coaching before. That's another, another man like him. Yeah, look very much. They certainly had a great day. There's no doubt about that. And um, look, they're just doing all the right things. They really are. They're doing the team stuff at the moment. They're playing better to the weather. I know it's pretty early in the season, but the guys have had to adjust pretty quick to, to the weather. Fully not having it at all pre season. But you know, it's, it's certainly it's just the intent of each man, the way they're being coached at the moment. Robin Bell can certainly do it and tear it apart really quickly. Uh, injury update on Colby. He's got his boot back on. He's obviously had ankle all taped up. And he's walked around. It looks like his fine's going to go back on shortly. Look like it's been a bit blase a few times there. Riddles there. Robin Bell used to boys just thinking it's a wet, is a dry day when it's not. Yeah, again, just not staying uh, close to their opponent. You have a look at Imps right across the board. Imps will only leave their opponent when they know it's time to go, whereas Robin Bale at the moment is still playing that game where they're not uh, they're trusting the well, team it. too much and Matt. they're not uh, sitting side by side Why? and allowing Why? the contest to come to them. They're trying to look for the contest and they're getting sucked in. Yeah, absolutely are, as we see a long clearing kick here for the Eggs out towards left half forward near the Kumiela Club scoreboard. It's through Bradley Hard's corner target there and Brad Balance. Balance over the top is pretty good as he finds the running Jackson Penny. He's looked good this afternoon. Good kick of penetration, might clear the pack, it's just a good fingernail over the line there by Isaac Corbo because uh, I reckon that was on the way home from good range. Good pressure on Jackson Penny. They are under siege right now, used to defence, it's a good kick out by Corbo though, it's on camera. As he plays trying to go to spark at the moment for the Eagles, kicks okay for Walker Lada, he's had to move up the centre wing, cuts inside again, kick not great. 
Rathbone's only made it work. Handball to Briganti. The goal by Handball is just the target. It is just not working. Alex Douglas in the middle of this pack couldn't quite get the handball out to his intended target. Done okay to hold it up there, Robin Bale used to, but again, they had the numbers, they had the advantage, but just couldn't hit the handballs, Paddy. So you need to have a look at uh, the way Imperials are setting up around here at the moment. They're very, very structured. Have a look at Robin Bale. Robin Bale is still sitting here with one, two, three players that are hanging off their, their opposition by at least 20 to 30 metres. It's almost like they get to half forward and the blinkers going. They can't see what the hell's going on. They've got no option or no solutions at this point of time as Johnson tries to get the push out of the contest for pick up front and centre. He bends the spoon. It might go through. Oh, and it's a big Ethan Gill got himself into a spot where he could have taken the catch, but back the young kid in, but get the result. Unfortunately, might have sort of the end uh, solution to that one. 7 6 48, Robin Bale, Houston, 10 9 69 for Imperials. Continue to build on that lead in this third quarter, which has ticked over 23 minutes. That's unlucky, yeah, there, big Gilly, because on any other day, that was going straight through the middle. It's getting into the upright. It looked back in your heart. It really was. Brad Hart's had a fantastic day. The skipper today for the Imperials. Plays on from the fullback. Long down the line, balanced the target. Double fist as well from Taylor. Back inside 50 for Robin Bale Houston. O'Donnell gets that first great pick up. Off balance, kick nicely. Callahan, that awkward kicking style didn't quite work there for early. Throwing his body in as Adkins. Now Ianko hooks it forward. That might work. Great position there from Nayland. Takes the grab against the shorter opponent for Brad Hart. It's going to have to, if you near one at the handball, just let him go back and have the shot here, I reckon, boys. Big knock rule. Kick from about 48 metres. Only a slight angle, though, and this would be huge Come for the Eagles. Well, that's interesting, Lord Callahan was that short kick again, rather than going for that clear and kick out of the contest, which, of course, is an over. So, Nayland, a famous number 21. He's given it a pretty good run. He's cool. He's cool. The three quarter time, and he's brought that margin back now from 21 points to 15 at the final change. Imperials 10 9 69. Robin Bale used to 9 6 54, I believe that might be coming through. You're listening to Hot FM here in 2024. Mitch Robin, Pat Silcox, Ben Ridley, Michael Thief, and Richard. You'll hear from soon. The numbers from Max the Axe Hollingworth, and of course, all the news from down the huddles from John Hollywood. Don't go anywhere. We've got a fantastic final quarter coming up on 106.7 Hot FM. Looking to start your fitness campaign or just looking for some variation in your training? At Club Aquarius, we have you covered with four 24-hour gym locations and raises the largest and only award-winning fitness and wellness company. Call us today on 50232280. Club Aquarius, proud sponsors of Hot FM. products and services but are also committed to returning profits to our local communities. You can also bank securely online using e-banking or the Bendigo Bank app. Get in touch with the Community Bank Network and District Branch about your banking needs today. You'll find us at 3638 Darling Street, Wentworth or call us to make an appointment. Community Bank, Wentworth and District, here to support you making big things happen. Sponsors of Hot FM. Pioneer Ford Robin Bale is your local dealer for new cars, pre-loved cars and that friendly customer service. And is your local dealer for service needs or just general advice. After 35 years owned by the same family, they're still the team for excellent customer service, quality vehicles and the team that keeps you moving in the right direction. Why not call in and see them today and see what they can do for you. Pioneer Ford Robin Bale, it's worth the drive. Check out the range at pioneerford.com.au. LMCT 7329. Proud sponsors of Hot FM. Are you needing catering for your next event? Enjoy Catering can provide catering to all types of events and functions. Finger food, paellas, our famous salt and pepper squid, or full course a la carte meals with over 20 years experience. Enjoy Catering provide outstanding service and will make your next function one to remember. Why not ask about our free venue hire with full bar facilities? Enjoy wine, enjoy food, enjoy life. That's Enjoy Catering. Take the stress out of your event and call our team today. Proud sponsors of 106.7 Hot FM. For all your fuel injection needs, call MAE Fuel Injection Service. They're the experts in diesel pump repairs, turbo repairs, reconditioning and testing mechanical injectors. MAE Fuel Injection 
service also test and clean common rail injectors for late model cars, 4x4s and trucks. They can even supply pre-filter kits and catch cans to prevent premature engine failure too. MAE Fuel Injection Service, next to the Waterside corner of 7th Street and Orange Avenue, 5023-0238. Hot sponsors. Hot FM is live local football. 106.7, Hot FM. If you need quality printing done, contact Mildura Printing Services in Hines Court, Mildura for the most competitively priced job. New printing equipment allows them to do all kinds of quality printing jobs, big or small. Yes, they can now print quality large or small self-adhesive labels for use on oranges, table grape boxes, bean boxes, any kind of fruit boxes. If you need a printed label, get a quote from Mildura Printing Services. The name to remember for corporate and business printing jobs, personal printing including wedding stationery, contact Lindsay, Kevin or Teresa at Mildura Printing Services, Heinz Court, Mildura, phone 5022-1441. Mildura Printing Services, proud sponsors of Hot FM. With thanks to Community Bank Wentworth and District, Hot FM is live local football. You betcha it is, and we've got a fascinating final quarter of action coming to you live here from Sarah Oval, the opening round of the Sunrise Football and Netball League. Imperials 10-9-69, Lady Robert Bell Houston 8-6-54, and a very handy last minute goal from Justin Nalen right before the three quarter time siren to bring the Eagles back within 15 points. Three goals for Adam, Aaron Lasky, four Imperials, Anthony McDonald tipping Woody Jaden Fox with two each, singles to Luke Hickey, to Brad Hards, and to Jared McNally, while for Robin Bell Houston, doubles each to Isaiah Johnson and to Raph Zoni, singles to Benji Neal, to Lua Pallada, and to Joey Mezzatesta. We'll try to Pat Silcox, Michael Deep, and Rizzio with you here, but let's go first to the man with all the numbers, Max Diax. Hollingworth, Maxie, uh, what can you tell us about that third quarter? In that third quarter, Anthony McDonald and Woody was quiet again with three possessions to have 14 possessions for the game. Yeah, certainly Brayden Turner, I reckon, had a really good influence on him in that quarter. What about his teammates? Aaron Lasky was good again in that quarter because he had seven possessions to have 19 possessions for the game, along with his three goals. Yeah, he's been outstanding and probably the leading contender for the three votes so far at this stage. What about uh, Brad Hards, who's been outstanding all day? Brad Hards was good as well, was great, with six possessions to have 19 possessions for the game. And what about the coach, Brad Valance? Brad Valance was quiet again, with just three possessions. He certainly played a structural role in that third quarter. What about for Robin Bell Houston, Benji Neal? We saw him holding the, uh, the forearm a little bit during that third quarter. How did he go possession-wise? Benji Neal was a bit quiet at that quarter, just having the three possessions to have 22 possessions for the game. What about Isaac Corvo? Isaac Corvo was great that quarter with nine possessions and four marks to have 17 possessions for the game. What about Charlie Ford, the recruit from Finley? Charlie Ford was very quiet with one possession. He certainly was. And Isaiah Johnson? Isaiah Johnson was also quiet with just two possessions. Love your work there, Max Hollywood, with all the numbers. We might go down to the boundary for John Hollywood and Club Aquarius. Johnny, we went to push to a three quarter time, mate. Boys, I'm. I wanted to get, you know, get a bit of an idea what they were thinking and feeling. Look, I don't know about saying this, but it just seems like an air of arrogance or confidence. They just know what they've got to do. They're just not quite doing it. Let's go back to Stephen. I think you guys have had a ride all day. There's still a lot in the contest before the contest has been won. So don't think creating that, that loose man, that run over the top by imps, that sort of stuff. Imps also are playing good old-fashioned wet, wet with the footy. They're manning up first. They win the contest. Then they go run and carry all the things they've got to do. But um, one well, just they're a team that can turn it on. They're, they're, they're talent laden. I'm looking around all the players and thinking, God, he could play, he could play. He's got great time. There's no doubt about that. This will come down to the better teams, I mean. We've got Corvo moving into the midfield. Uh, for Robin Bell Houston. Trying to make a statement here to start this final turn. Ah, uh, Robin Bell Houston as we're underway here at Sarah Oval. Corvo immediately with a one handed handball. I'm by him. Pick it up. Burns kicks it forward for Imperials. Jack Taylor leading the race to the footy. He's got Jared McNally there with him. Got him in a hole in the arm. Umpires let it go. And now a good tackle there on, I reckon, McHugh. Oh, Nicely done by Dion Cameron. He's done some nice things today, Pete. Yeah, he has. They have said they've injected Corbo closer to the action. I would have preferred to see him the centre half four, but certainly make an impact through that midfield rotation as they kick along down towards that 11th Street side centre wing. And for Ethan Gill, quick kick out of danger for him. Over is Jared McNally. And the free kick there, the whistle from umpire Paddy Buick. 
Jack Taylor's had a bit of a dusty day today. Hasn't quite got things right, and it's going to be the fizzle. At the point of the square on that outer side here at Sierra Ovals, they kick up there looking for Luke Hickey. Here's McDonald Tip and Woody, 45 out. Smacks it around the body, looking there for Jaden Fox in the goal square. Bounce will determine. will be escorted over the line there by Zach Leslie, and we will get a ball in. Right Certainly trying to turn his opponent inside out to make sure he was in the right position there. The Fox in the box. Flicked over inside the fourth pocket. Nicky just shoves Atkins out of the way. Big strong ruck contest down there. He's also doing it at a ground level too. And now he also wrapped up by Jack Taylor again. Have another stalemate. 25 from home directly in front for Imperials. They can hit the first cut of this quarter. They're certainly going to hurt the Robin Vale Houston Eagles. The tackle could have been a hole. Oh, it's okay. A chance now for Pilata. Take a bit of time off the clock here in this right forward pocket. We'll take a set shot from about 25 metres out. Reasonably tight angle, but I reckon if he sticks to the left post, he'll be okay. Look at that. It's holding. It's going to just drift a little bit left and almost mark for the last one. Man up there, man up there. It's gone through for a minor score. So 10 10 70 to the machine. 8.654 Robin Vale Houston will kick over two and a half minutes. Final quarter at your home event. So raise your footy match. John Hollywood on the boundary. What are you seeing down there so far in this final quarter? Oh, look, I'm seeing exactly you just calling it. Look, that was a little bit arrogant seeing the outside of the right foot. In the gap, with the left foot just banging on the kid. Oh! It's actually a little bit disappointing. They're good enough. They can probably win this game quite close if they want to. They're just going to play, not play the football they should be playing under these conditions. Free kick. He's just had an outstanding day today, the number 21. Holding up on true centre wing. He's going to go long down the line now. I think he was trying to find Bryce Hodes over the back. It might still work to that position. Taylor left his man at ground level. Donald Tipper and Hurley both there for Imps. Oh, great pick up by Tipper. He didn't leave it behind. He's coming back after it again. Now Turner. He's had a good second half on him. Didn't hit that one as well as he would have liked. Brad Hodge, good shovel hand. He's absolutely nailed him. And he might be feeling a little bit sore there, Paddy, but he's lifted when they need him. Keep rolling! Keep rolling! Keep rolling! Keep rolling! Quick handball off to Corvo. That's a clever kick, actually. Really good vision for Nailey. Got options. He won very short there in camera. I think he was probably within the 15 metres. That's probably not a very smart idea, actually, for Nailey to hold on. One of them, a running uh, man coming past him, Neil. And now he's going to have to go along to the goal square himself. Not certain about the journey. He's looking to try and give it off. Got a good view of this one right behind him. The big number 20. Oh, kicks it strong, strong. Oh! Two massively important game, goals in the context of this game. Second of the afternoon, and it is now Robin Vale Houston at 9 6 60, 10 points adrift on Imperials, 10 10 70 on the Kumi Allen Club scoreboard. Five minute mark last turn down to you, John Holly, with Big Knocker getting the job done in the second half. Yeah, Big Knocker's the only one that probably uh, doubts his ability. Knocker's been a wonderful player for this club for a long, long time. Kick that goal, he's going to the guts now. Look, getting back to Mr. Gill, he's been fine. Guys, been doing lots and lots of running. They're probably in the wrong positions because the way they've been carrying the ball wide. I think Ben talked about it earlier. They're pushing wide all the time at every opportunity, even if there's a target up the centre. So Gilly's had to go back and forth this ground like no tomorrow. So I think he's actually moving really well. They're just not getting it through properly. Nice little bench here, bouncing off the players in the contest. He's caught one a little bit over the shoulder there too. He's 
starting to stamp his influence on this last quarter a little bit deeper. Plenty of contested possessions for him. Long down the line. Jasper Johnson off hands there from Nalen as well. Trying to clear down the defence of Prendergast. Can't really get any traction. Now it's the Imperials defence under some real heat. Pilata. He's accidentally fell in his lap. He's got a chance to go again. Now the Lou Pilata around the corner. This might work okay if Atkins can take it. Well done by Lasky to bring it to ground level. Tap four there by Fontaine and across the boundary line on the 11th Street side. But now the Imperials defence defense is the one under pressure. Yeah, that's exactly right. Good forward pressure there from uh, the Eagles players. Uh, we had um, Matt Cameron in there and uh, Mo Pilata as well, just uh, making sure they can't get it out of that defense either. Good test, isn't it, for the Green Machine and their fitness reserves. First game after a long pre-season. We're seeing a lot of blokes cramping up and stretching. Have the Eagles got the petrol in the tank to finish strongly. Almost gives me vibes of John James Oval against a ripple this game at the moment. As it goes to the goal square, Mark Taken, there's a Pilata there, it's just to drop the round the corner. And he uh, read it beautifully running back on the fly to the footy. All of a sudden, it's uh, starting to open up because they're playing direct and going long. That kick inside, as uh, talked about, Paddy, went long deep back, but it just hold behind. It's just lost the lot of there for me, he has missed that. He's missed everything. He's run around on his left to try and snap it and absolutely missed the whole box of dice. I was, going on. I was looking down to make a note for my notepad. By the time I looked up, it's out of bounds on the full. What? I don't you know what's going on. Was it a, a snap that uh, went too what far? I don't know why you need to. Disappointing for Cosmo He set that one up. He probably deserved uh, an assist. Or you need to run around the corner when you're pretty much directly in front of goal. Again, a little bit laconic from the Eagles. We've seen a bit of that Decision arrogance today. Interesting. Mm, as uh, Inch trying to work it out through half back, but in comes Nalen. Free kick there on that previous passage. Looks like it may well go the way of his. And free kick has been paid as a result. So, the fun time, confusion. No, it's going to go the other way. Yeah, so it's going to end up with the end of the test as he kicks it to the hot spot. Two Eagles fired over and just step there. Now, let me get it. Just go back and kick it. Hockey to be told. Oh, sir! He told Easy Johnson this. You know, this one's mine. Uh, you can, uh, you can yeah. take a break uh, for round one this year. Nalen took it over. I think Johnson started to get frustrated when he saw it was a teammate. Okay. Then he realised it was Nalen to go, no, I'll, I'll let it go, son. Hey. So, he's going to be kicking from. Probably the same distance as the last one, but a better angle pattern seems yep. to think. A better opportunity. Maybe we have to put the commentator's curse on the big fellow. Here he goes. Sets it up. It looks good. It's a time for the Eagle. Last three goals of the game to bring Robin Bell Houston back to within four points. I reckon if you if you're a teammate, you just just let him take it because he's got the lightest touch right now. Well, the, the goal before that one, he actually went and yeah, looked around and you both caught it and said he doesn't, he's not that confident. So he bucks yelling at him saying, go back and just kick the goal, big fella. That's what I was saying to him. So, as I said, he lacked his own confidence, but not that time. Well done. Tapped out out of the middle from Gill was nice. Neil with the clearance and a chance here for Dion Camera. It looked like a clever little kick looking for Atkins, but it was well read by Fontaine, who just got front position. Switches the kick now. It's nicely hit. Brad Valance takes the mark right. and left half back. Up a long way to find the footy, Brad, as he uh, outlets it there to Luke Hickey, centre wing, 11th Street side. They go to Jaden Fox. This is a really good passage unfolding for the green machine. Jaden Fox about 70 metres out from goal underneath the Kumiela Club scoreboard. Just pivots and looks for tip. Oh, oh, Set it up! Nicely done, wasn't it? He didn't use his hands at all. He just used the forearms and the body. And as Paddy said, he just got himself in the right position at the right time. Yeah, Paddy Zetter was basically just smart. And um, Brady Turner been doing a pretty good job uh, this afternoon against uh, a pretty quality opponent, but uh, just uh, couldn't get it done that time because uh, Tipper knew exactly what he was doing. To stem the tide here and give Imperials back a 10 point buffer. Anthony McDonald, Tipper Woody, two goals in the first half. Looking for his third as an inch player. And he's going oh, to Coach, another one. He's got that kind of experience and knowledge. They have to use it and in that position, 
He absolutely used it to perfection. Yeah, well, he did. I'm not sure about that rule and all that sort of stuff. I don't know what it looks like. I think, you know, Braden's done everything right there. He's pushed back. He's a big monster of a man. You can't get him out of the way. But that's the experience of Braden's footy. I'm guys like it. Yeah, yeah, With that said, I still think Braden's been fantastic today. Maybe he could have kicked six or seven by now if he wasn't playing on Turner. All right, so uh, the Eagles really uh, putting all their aces into the deck now with uh, Ethan Gill going to that ruck contest. Slaps it out. Benji Neal's advantage. He kicks from inside the square. Back with the flight. Johnson couldn't hang on to it. Wow. It was uh, right there for him, but at the end of the day... Kick it! Keep the Dukes locked around it, so minor score that was... Uh, extract from Imperials, but it's Robin Bale used to 10-7. 11-10-7-6. 11, 10, 7, 6. 11 minutes gone last quarter, Mitchie. Chance here for Imperials trying to find something. Out of half back. Nine point advantage sits right now. Long down the line, Hickey's the target. Gill, right. well, he said he might have been a little fumbly early, but he's had an impact in this last quarter so far in the rucks and around the ground. Big number 48, five time best and fairest winner. Left shoe forward, Nayland at the back. Back in the take most times. Front bump away from him though, Douglas. Handball back, missed the target of Colby Hards. One handed handball from Penny. Now, right into the turf as well. Stalemate about 55 behind for the Eagles. 10-7-67 for the Eagles. Need to try and get the next one on the board, the visitors today. Atkins just takes a tumble. Burns. The handball trying to get it up to across the boundary line. The clear winner around the stoppage is D-Fab is going to be the one that's going to go on to take out this game, I reckon, because we're going to see a lot of the stop starts, a lot of action ball on the deck, balls over the line. All right, so Zach Galbraith has uh, come onto the ground as uh, Benny Ridley joins us here for the, uh, the final throws of that one. Jackson Penny, who has been one of their better players today, Riddle, so they'll uh, be keen to get him looked at and back onto the ground as soon as possible. Yeah, absolutely. Been very, uh, very crucial for him across half back as we see the two big ruckmen go for it. The ball spills out. Looking for a Yanko. Oh, 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 and that's going to be young Harry Knights who's going to get the free kick in the back pocket there. Pretty crucial inside 50 there that they just turned over. He's had a couple of brain explosions caused this afternoon. He likes to use his size and throw it around, but there's a time and a place for it, I guess. As he's trying to get this catch here at half-back through Lasky. Squirts out front here for Kalana. Favoured on the left shoe. Long raking kick to a one out here. Going back there is Nayland. Can't quite. Montaigne under pressure. He'll see it over the line. My score will be the result. So Robin Vale used in 10 8 68 on the Finial Club scoreboard. Imperials 11 10 76. He travelled almost 13 minutes. Final quarter on Hot FM. He goes and 1 2, doesn't he, Defab? Uh, for that uh, missed opportunity just a minute ago in front of goals. You can see the ball clear out. Oh, We've got Young. It looks like uh, that's Young Zappier at the back there. Just looks Excuse me, there, boys. Yes, Johnny. Just to interrupt that, Mr. Penny, I'm hoping to go. It's just a cramp. They just looked at it as a cramp. They tried to stretch it out as a cramp. They looked at the back of his knee. He seems to be fine here. It certainly looked like a cramp when he came off rather than a hyper extension. So I hope it'll be good to go back. Thanks, Johnny. As we get a reload here at left half forward. Burns and Gill going at it. Forward front centre. Chance here. Last one. Last one. Last one. Last one. Last one. Last one. Loads it up now off the right. Shoot towards right half forward for McDonald. Tip. continue to come up with the answers when they need them. Well, they have the control, that is me. They have the control because they haven't left the contest unless they've won it. Once they've won it, yeah, they'll go, they'll run both ways, that sort of stuff, but they'll wait till they've got the ball. They'll do all the old-fashioned stuff first, and then they'll do the creative stuff second. All in play here from Bulls over to Gill, who flashes there inside the center square, opens it up to Hickey, one out for McNally, tough ass for Taylor, squirts it out in front, boxes lurking, he's pretty dangerous here, he's getting the numbers, McNally over the top of the ball, squirts out the back, here's a chance. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I would, uh, absolutely crucial. Ah. 
get there as well. So just a uh, layup for the uh, Mike McHugh. He's only going to be kicking from 20 metres out directly in front. But as you said, uh, unfortunately, he did not miss that at all. Yes, this is a chance to get them back out to that 20-point break. And the point from the short in their favour. 16 minutes from the last quarter. <laughs> As you said, Silco, very, very uh, crucial uh, free kick there. And DFAB, every time the Reds go, go forward, it seems to be the Reds have an answer and they are able to bounce back. Go forward! No, that's well. exactly right. We've got a caller wondering, uh, are they going to hold on? Are they going to hold on? Are they going to actually take control? And, uh, you know, I think that would, uh, probably puts it beyond the outcome. So it's a little bit to play out. So. We'll see what happens. Broncos used to kick the first two of this final quarter, but they're on the bounce now for a few minutes. They push their margin back out to 20 points. Is it comfortable enough at this stage? I think they love it. Here's one more. Now, Lasky, what a game he's had. David, Lasky, and get it perfectly for the goal. It's just such a hard run to score. And the thing about Nelly is once he gets uh, on a lead, no one wants to stay in front of him. He's such a strong mark, he just has such a big frame around him that he's able to take that on the chest. And again, just that crucial point just down there by Lasky. Benji Neal being huge in this last quarter. But again, he's been able to just set up the field as we Maybe slightly tighter, you can just see how hard he came at it deep out as he wins oh, himself. Oh, 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 Uh, 
they can have rushed and tried to do anything they can to get the ball forward and set the stone ball at every turn. You're right, exactly right. They're not panicked, you know. A lot of these these goals in this quarter have just been those perfect kicks to the right man in the right position. Third goal there for Jane Fox. Three goal kick of four green machine. Alongside Anthony McDonald, Tipper Woody, and Aaron Lasky. Three goal kick of three for the green machine. Alongside Anthony McDonald, Tipper Woody, and Aaron Lasky. John Hollywood on the boundaries. A spreading goal kick is on a day like today is always going to be handy, but it's been quite a nice one. Oh, I don't know if you can do could have kicked more. There's no doubt about that. Things have done the right things for us. They've gone out and started the game with intent. They've run the game plan down. They've had the work to get down. And they've just stayed here. So they're going to be a hard team to beat. You have to break them up. A bit of frustration, I think, from Isaac Corvo coming out. He's just sort of failed him or whoever's walking past him at the moment. I don't want to be the man walking out next to him through the gates. But the, the exit of Sarah Oli as Dart Hurley down ground level through Dillon's right forward pocket. It's going to be held up there right about 25 metres from the line. One of the real positives, Imperials averaged 51 points last year. They're not winning seven goals in a game. And today they've got uh, twice as much as seven in 14 goals on a wet day. So yeah. I think that's a He's got time to assess the options up forward. He elects to go long, looking for Fox. Fox has two to beat, gets pulled off the ball, but still going in. Oh, and Bizzle McNally comes into him for his presence. Again, Hogarth follows it up nicely, gets it out wide of the Douglas, goes inside to Prenegas. Prenegas with a narrow handball over the top. It gets uh, cut off there. Rob Bale having numbers at the ball. Benji Neal being a warrior all day. He looks for the short chip out wide, and he finds a teammate in Leslie. So they can look to settle here, but it might be just a little bit too much too late as Paul Hogue just tries to settle at half back. They've taken the time here deep, but they can't afford to really, can they? We're ticked over to 23 minutes now in this final turn. Yeah, they're much running out of time as uh, Matthew Campbell is able to drop off. He's looking a bit uh, sore up now. Good sign. We were questioning whether or not the Bureaus have the gas to go for the rest of today. And they have dominated this last quarter in the last 10 minutes or so. Oh,
great start for the Grand and Wharton machine at the moment, and just a fantastic atmosphere around here, Virginia. Absolutely, it is. I reckon everyone actually wearing green and black will be over the moon right now. We're going to head back to the studio and take a few messages from our valued sponsors and be back to wrap us up. It's been a cracking season. Players will be back. Don't know if you could lose by 106.7. Oh, yeah, thanks. When we lose, we have a Thanks.